They said I was wrong. They say it was much too cold. But I just couldn't get in the mood. when you touch me. Touch me.
Hey, hey. What's up, everyone? <laughs> We're here, first of all, on a Monday. Rare. Second of all, 2 p.m. on a Monday. Also rare. But we got a speed run to do, and I feel like the middle of the day is better for uh, farming opponents. <laughs> or there just might be more people uh, ready to learn. Sometimes you stream a bit later on this channel, you know, a few people have had too many drinks. They're not ready to sit down and uh, learn about the King's Indian, you know? So, thought we would uh, start a little bit earlier today. Like I said, just about 2 p.m. for me. Happy Monday. Mondays usually suck. So that's why I'm streaming. To make your Monday a little better. Hey, AB, Amanda, Spudge, Double Reverse, Redson. We've got uh, some German representation. Thanks for 34 months, Redson. Tier 3. Definitely EU friendly. Hoping that uh, the Europeans will be checking in. You see, first time chatter from the UK. There we go. Somewhere, uh, someone from overseas. Hello, hello. For those that haven't seen the other episodes, I have a new account that I started at 800 ELO. And we've been playing a very specific set of openings for either side, both of them the King's Indian. And seeing what we can learn about this opening as we move up the ranks. I think the last 100 points or so has been uh, maybe much more instructive than you know, the first one or 200 points, that's for sure. But right now it's like the prime rating range, in my opinion. 1400 to 1500. I think this is where uh, I think this is where we'll see some of the more interesting games. Hopefully strong players. I, I know from what, 12 to 1300? That was the strongest category so far. By far. 1200s are too strong for me, man. Hello from Greece. Hello there, Chris. Thank you, Ravens. Castling is for betas. Five gifted subs. Thanks a lot, man. Very, very, very generous of you as we start off our stream here. Although I can promise you in just about every game I've played, I think we've castled, so what does that make me? T-Charts, thanks for the six months. Welcome, welcome. That's a prime sub from T-Charts. Are you, Ma? Thank you, thank you. Look at that, we gotta stay on the, uh, gotta stay on the webcam screen a little bit longer based on the looks of things, you know? The metrics are pointing, uh, away from the speedrun cap. Thank you so much, Arya. My account's called Speed Only, so we're going to, uh, hopefully bring a little bit of that to the table. A little bit of speed. But yeah, with white, we're, um, I can't really, uh, on this but with white we're looking to play e4 and get a very quick uh kingside fianchetto and with black obviously we're looking to play the king's indian defense so king's indian attack or king's indian defense oh did i did i hire yasser to read out all my subs and donations this stream i didn't i forgot i did that i forgot i did that yeah, if you subscribe, gift subs, Yasser is here to read out <laughs> your notification. Yeah, I forgot I uh, signed Yasser to a 10 day contract. Hello, Yasser. Good evening. Over there in the Netherlands. See, this is what I was saying, guys. Mondays, stream a little bit earlier. You get the Europeans in there. Guys like Yasser, he counts. I got my cliff bar for sustenance here as well. Oh, 
<laughs> Gas was taking his job seriously. There you go, Spudge. Thanks for the five gifted. Hey, Coach Casey. Switzerland. Very, very nice. I've been to Switzerland a few times. Geneva, Zurich. Haven't made it to Bern, though. Also been to Beale. Yasser just had butter chicken. He's ready for some chess. He's here to learn about the King's Indian just like y'all. Thank you, Goal 11, for the 46 months with Prime. Tyware 18, seven months with Prime. Joe God gifting a sub. Thanks, Joe God 92. All right, so you guys know the drill. We've been playing five minute games. Without further ado, we will uh, see if we can win our first game of the day here. And see if we start with the white or black pieces. White pieces, all right. We might need a refresh. Right, the, the French, we need to uh, generally be going knight d2 very quickly. We don't want to allow the queen trade to happen. This setup should be very familiar. And this setup right here is very common because it happens against the Sicilian and against the French. So I think this system that we have right here is going to be one of the most common that we see in the entire opening. And the way that we've been playing it thus far, um, I think I think it is a little bit different when it comes to uh, to this position. So let's see what he goes for. Castles, and it's just a little odd that he's gone knight here, but normally if he castled here, I would play pawn there and then play rook there. So what we're getting here is an exact transposition and I have other options, but I'm definitely gonna be playing this because this is the position that I expect that I'll have to talk about a lot during this speed run. And this is one that is definitely a little bit different to some of the other King's Indian, like the way that we've been playing the King's Indian so far with H3 and F4. So this is a very specific setup. And yeah, like I said, it'll work against the, uh, yeah, this setup right here, which is French, Sicilian. You can get it a lot of different ways. All right, so he's immediately gone for F6, which is, a pretty direct way of playing. Uh, there's not really any way I can support the pawn, so I'm definitely gonna be taking that. Whoa. 50 gifted subs from AB Shakespeare. Talk about uh, someone excited that Yasser's having uh, butter chicken. Go AB Shakespeare. Butter chicken, easily my favorite dish. Uh, in terms of Indian cuisine, and I grew up having a lot of Indian food. Very tasty. Thank you to AB. There should be some thank yous in the chat as well if you just got a gifted sub. Thanks to that man. Knight takes F6. Okay, so pawn cannot get to E5 at the moment. Uh, you know, we have things like Queen E2 to add pressure, Knight E5 to add pressure. The pawn on E6 is a little bit weak. I think about moves like Bishop to H3, right, to also hit that pawn. But in terms of queen e2, bishop h3, all these moves look uh, look pretty tempting. I'm going to start with this. Wow. e5. That's a pretty impressive move. I'm just going to have to take it and go for it. Because I remember, you know, ages ago, I'm pretty sure I used to play this. So this is a... Uh, this is a blast from the past for me. Let's get this rook out of dodge. Rookie one looks fine. Rookie two actually allows knight to knight g4, whereas rookie one seems to uh, avoid it, keeping it protected for now. I think I need to play queen or sorry king up and then knight over. is a uh, 
position that is going to need some work, that's for sure. Queen e2 looks uh, like a reasonable try. You know, I want to play queen e6 really badly. And yeah, I, I do want to kick the knight out at some point with that move. Here I figured, you know what? Let's let's take it. Oh my goodness. I can't take it. I have to play this. I was going to take this rook. Uh-oh. We're going to have to play this move. I was actually going to play this move. Which would have been worse. It's better to realize it. Because this is a force mate. Although I guess I would go here and still get force mated. So we're going to have to play this. And after d4, h3? Do we live to fight another day? I think we do. Question mark? Yeah, we saw it too late. But again, remember what I was telling you guys here? I was ready to dive into some deep explanations. I was actually pretty excited that we finally saw this opening. But the way my opponent's playing with e5, I could already tell you that he's a serious player. He gave up a pawn willingly, and he didn't miss a beat. Yeah, and now knight takes e3. We're dealing with a heavy hitter here, guys. A heavy hitter. How can one even play this game. How do I even play this game? We have 30 seconds and we're against easily the strongest player we've met in this speed run. Speed run. Oof. This is a... I, there's not even a move. There's not even a move. I'm gonna move my king because I feel like this is a little kind of too easy. Just slap, slapped around. <laughs> this is a stomp, as they say. Man, I don't even have a... Oh my God, do you see this move by him? This is absolutely disgusting. That he did that? Oh no, this is gross. Hang on a sec. We need to really, uh, need to really make a comeback here. No, 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 E2 at the end of all that is just, it's just filthy what I'm dealing with here. The conversion from this guy is just disgusting. Bishop F2 and E2 there really put me out. <laughs> really put me out. Oh man, this is a stomp. But I feel like the game is now at its most uh, competitive state. You know what I mean? This game now feels highly competitive. Very, very competitive. <laughs> we need a king on E8. King on E8. Yes, take my pawn. Take my pawn. King on e8, guys. We have hope here. He's gonna sack his queen for my pawn. 
we have a dream. We did it! I told you, I had a dream. I had a dream. You can never, ever take your stick off the ice. Ever in chess. You have to always keep your stick on the ice. It might have looked dead to the average viewer, but here, White maintains strong drawing chances. Strong drawing chances. I've never ever felt more excited to add something to the draw column. Never in my life have I been happier. <laughs> well, he played the game of his life, but unfortunately, uh, unfortunately the final move lacked a little bit of precision. <laughs> Yeah, we'll take that. That feels like a win, guys. And you know what? Our rating didn't even go down. So we didn't even enter the 1300s. We're still a 1400 player. It's as if that never happened. <laughs> yeah, that, that definitely got the blood flowing. That's for sure. That woke you guys up in chat as well. You know? Definitely got Yasser on the edge of his seat there. No, oh, no, no. That definitely woke up AB Shakespeare. Another 50 gifted subs. That's the Monday energy. You know, that's what we've been missing. Moves like this. Start to finish, AB. He had me dead to rights. E5. This is a, <laughs> this is a serious move. No, this is, uh, this is rough stuff. This is also a completely filthy move that he did. Should have played here. Would have done the same thing though. He's always playing E2. Man, some serious uh, stuff from the guy. <laughs> but as long as you keep the stick on the ice, there is a hope. There we go. Let that be a lesson to all y'all. Ashwin Cower, thanks for the six months. Hatter, thanks for 14 months. And AB, Shakespeare. I have to put it all together, man. That's 100 gifted subs from the guy. And I can tell you, AB, that uh, I think we delivered here. I scored the best possible result, given the circumstances. Given the circumstances. You wonder if he thought that I was cheating and that this felt justified. Well, there's no chance. <laughs> Look at the game that I played. <laughs> so no way you could bust me for cheating. Look how bad it was. It was lower than 1400 quality. <laughs> I'm safe here. Can't get me. All right, let's get the next game. I still have 1400. It's like it didn't happen. You know, boom, we're just on to the next one. No big deal. Welcome to the King's Indian speed run. Although that draw kind of gives it away. People don't know when they see that draw that that was worth more than all 73 of those wins. People just won't understand. All right. So again, with the black pieces against e4, we don't really have a choice but to Genketo anyway, and just, you know, it's not really a King's Indian, but we'll call it a King's Indian for the purposes. Maybe e5, I have a, I have a feeling he will uh, consider taking that. But remember, this is, uh, 
what is this, 1400? These guys are getting serious at 1400. You know, they're not the type to just uh, waltz into a, an easy blunder, you know? So we get our h6 move in. I still don't need to protect this pawn, but I feel like he's kind of on to my... <laughs> I don't think he thinks it's hanging, put it that way. He's on to me, that's for sure. Just one more time. What do you think, bud? He interested? I think he's wise to me. Okay, well that move tells me he's very wise. Let's play a knight d7 and protect that guy. So we've got a pretty similar, pretty similar setup to normal. I'm actually, I think I'm gonna use a move that we've used before, which is uh, queen e8. I'm gonna get out of this, get out of this pin here. And I was about to say I was gonna play knight h5, but after this move, this looks even better. Hit the bishop, also protect my pawn, uncovering my own bishop there. Yeah, this is technically a modern. It'd be like a modern or a pierce if you're playing against e4 and still going for g6, bishop g7. And, you know, something like rook d8, knight f4. These all look like uh, pretty good looking moves. Looking at this one right now. I'm gonna start with the rook. Okay, knight a3. I think it might be time for this. The only thing is, that knight move looks uh, annoying enough that it's gonna cause me to play c6. I don't wanna deal with this with my queen on e8. But yeah, my next move is going to be knight here. Definitely queen up to e7 wants to happen. You play queen e8 to get out of the pin, but eventually the long-term plan is to bring the queen back up to e7. All right, well, you guys know where I'm bringing this knight. Definitely into f4, lining up with that rook there as well. And hey, give me that bishop pair, baby. f5, very much in tune with the opening. Okay, the d-pawn looks like uh, a nice little target. Can it even be defended? I think he has to push the pawn. So if I move my knight somewhere, I'll be threatening to take it. And I think he just has to push the pawn. Because the other thing I can do is play queen here. Um, but then the move g3 happens. And don't think I love the fact that I don't have a threat there. So I'm definitely feeling like it's time to move this knight. If knight f6, d4, what tricks do we have there? Where are my tricks? I wish I could play knight c5, I definitely do. That would be a much nicer looking move. As it stands, I'm forced to do, uh, I'm forced to do some calculation work here. Knight needs to move somewhere. I want to keep f5 available, so I'm probably going to go here. And I would certainly invite a move like this. Knight d3 would be the follow-up. Does knight f6 lose my other knight? Why? What's the... Is there a limit on how many minor pieces can be on the f-file? Or maybe how many pieces total? Well, I was actually trying to bait him into this move. I'm actually more impressed that he found that move than not finding it. Playing this move shows me that you're 1400. Like, a 1200 wouldn't play this move because they wouldn't see it. 
they wouldn't see the possibility to trap the rook. 1400 would find it because they're 1400, but it would actually be a blunder and they would lose the game. So this is an ironic moment where if you're lower rated, we, you and I would have a longer game than if you were 1400. It's just how it works. He's good enough to see the tactic, not good enough to know it doesn't work. Sometimes it's a benefit to be that low rated player. You just don't even see it at all. It just doesn't cross your mind. Different tax brackets. We got our first win of the day. Huge. Yeah, chess is easier when you're just not good at it. You know, you don't you don't know what you don't know. But unfortunately, we uh, didn't get a super long game here. Um, he played a, a setup just with quick f4, e4. We stuck to our setup, but it wasn't really a, you know the, the most interesting game to learn from, I would say, just because uh, the f pawn makes it a lot tougher. And with that pawn on f2, we'd be going, going like this and then trying to play f5 ourselves. But with our opponent's pawns like this, playing f5 and e5 is a Bit of a difficult ask. The Orbis. Uh, Fridless, thanks for the seven months with Prime. Finish swag. That's a full year for resub to the channel. Let's get our next game in. We got a win with the black pieces. How about a win with the white pieces? Because we were suffered the last time we played white. Now we'll go for our classic D3. A, D2, H3. You guys know the drill. He's doing some stuff over there, eh? Okay. Maybe even c3, but I'll start with this one. I don't think I'll play f4 though until my king is on h2. I'll stick with all the uh, all the normal moves here. All the ones that we've talked about previously in this speedrun. C3, it's another classic one we're gonna need. Okay, what is he up to here? Okay, let's bring the knight into f5. I mean, the reason we go here, yes, is to make way for that, but knight f5 is just a uh, super strong move. We're either gonna get the uh, bishop or the pawn, or maybe both. <laughs> so knight d4, it does hand me the pawn there. That's the first thing I'm looking at. The only thing is if I take the pawn, then I might need to uh, come back to f5 and trade pieces. Still, pawn is a pawn, very hard to say no to that. We're gonna take it. And look, we just won a pawn, and we just got a raid from Dina. Thank you, the Belenkaya. Appreciate that. We just won a pawn, so you guys came at a great time. We're, uh, we look good on stream, perfect. Knight h5, takes takes, knight takes uh, c2, looks a little rough, so I think we'll just uh, bring the knight back. Yeah, welcome guys. Welcome, welcome, let's take that as well. Knight f5 does trade everything. I can't really complain because I'm up a pawn, but, you know, it sucks to trade. A shout out there. That was uh, a lot of people. Welcome. 273 of you. Make yourself comfortable. Happy Monday. If you're a regular Dina viewer, I guess it might be a lot later um, where she's streaming from. I think a rook on the open file makes sense. So does the queen. Our f4 move doesn't look as impressive anymore, honestly. So 
Right. Probably, uh, probably not as interested in it. Let's go for this. I think I want to keep adding uh, some attackers to that pawn. Bishop b2 and something like queen f3 will protect that guy. Oh, well, you know what I want to see. I want to see that move. <laughs> this move is going to feel great. Pawns on dark squares just gave me the e4 square. Now we're in a good mood. I don't think they're uh, awake yet, AB. Yeah, that's the thing. They're not used to this uh, hour, you know? Very useful move, a4. Why is a4 so important? Well, we want to take and then get our rook a wide open file. There's lots of squares I can use to invade. If b4 happens, what's well, the same deal as d4? All of a sudden, you're giving me my giving my knight so many beautiful squares. Same thing if you capture it. Look at that. C4, E4. Those belong to me. Tell I'll me take them. So that feels uh, that feels pretty good. Knight C4. For example, we just won this pawn. Bishop C1 also looks like a a nice way to start. Ready to take H6 with check. He's not going to give me that pawn, but the check is worth a lot. Now I can take this. The king is going to be smack in the middle of the board. And honestly, as tempting as this is and as winning as that is, I think my opponent has a very, very high chance of blundering his queen. And I'm going to take the risk. It's, it's just a, it's a tricky piece that night. Hey, that's a good move. Minirin. That's a good move, pal. Jack. Well, he had a high chance to blunder his knight. He just didn't do it. <laughs> the problem for uh, Minirin is... He's walking into that one. Bishop f4. Honestly, you gotta give it to Minirin here. He's, he's kind of seeing all the tactics. I mean, he's blundering them, but he's seeing that he's blundering them. <laughs> the king is a bit stuck here, actually. This isn't quite mate, but it's darn close. Hmm. I think we gotta take that. He's blundering them, but he's seeing you blundering them. I mean, that's got to count for something. So I've got these pieces covering the king. I'm, I've got the king boxed in here in a pretty nice way. Pretty funny to just mate the king in the center of the board. We'll obviously give it our best shot. But you feel like at some point you gotta do this. It's almost a stalemate, but not really. Yeah, he, he wants to draw, but the problem is it's never going to be a stalemate because he always has this move. But I think he uh, he knew what was happening. They knew what he was dealing with. GG. So yeah, he had some blunders, but he was also catching most of the, the tricky tactics as well. These moves, though, are worse to me. Like, so far, he blundered a full pawn like this, remember? Okay, that's clearly a blunder, but as somebody who's looking at the game from maybe a coaching or teaching teachable moment perspective, I don't care about knight takes g7. Everyone misses uh, stuff like that. It's just a hanging pawn. If you show him that position again, he's gonna understand nine more times out of 10 that there's a hanging pawn there and that in this position, he should do a different move than knight d4. So I don't really care about this. 
in terms of improvement. That's fine. This move is high. This move is highly bothersome. This is much worse than hanging upon. Because if you show him this position nine more times out of ten, he might play this move almost every time and just not understand why it's not a good move. So this is the one that hurts from a teachable perspective. Gives up e4, dark square bishops, you don't want dark square pawns. The whole point is that the pawn does a great job at restricting the knight. This pawn restricts the bishop, you want to keep the, uh, the pawn mass there, but when you play d4 and then when you play b4, it shows a complete lack of understanding for the color complexes. White is getting all these light squares, dark square bishop can jump around the entire board, as it did. Right? My bishop didn't look so great, but then all of a sudden, it's like wide open, it's on this diagonal, this diagonal, that diagonal, whereas the dark square bishop here didn't do anything, so. Hey Bruno. Those are the more uh, serious blunders, actually, even though he didn't lose any material playing here. Hello, Kilimanjaro and Eddie. Good evening, gentlemen. Good afternoon. I can actually still say that. to Matthew 1337. Original black pepper. We got some people checking in at a different hour here. All right. Finally got to win with the white pieces. Let's see if we can go again. Remember with this, we usually want to play move d3 and then knight d2. And he played this move pretty quickly. He's playing all his moves pretty quickly. <laughs> okay, geez. Somebody slow this cat down. Um, I think that uh, after the move knight h7, we could probably admit that knight h4 is uh, not the move. We're gonna lose a pawn there. It's certainly not worth it. I'm gonna continue with knight c4. This is still a fine setup to have, so doesn't really matter what black might do, like getting this set up is exactly what we need. So goes a6. If he wanted to play b5, he could have just played it. So to me, the move a6 is a little bit superfluous. And after I play here, you don't want to play f5. Because now what's going to happen is it's essentially like trading bishop for knight, which is great for me. Don't forget that that's exactly what I wanted to do from this game. So I'm going to play that c3 move, take squares away from the knight. Thinking about queen e2. And when I see a move like this, my first instinct is actually not to capture it. It might feel very natural to capture on g5, but I look at this position and I think that that knight on g5 is not very well placed. I'm going to play knight h4, take some squares of my own. And he's got to be very careful where he places his pieces now. me a lot of light squares. Look at his pawns. All dark square pawns. I've got a light square bishop, right? Bishop d5. It doesn't take uh, doesn't take a lot to go wrong here. But this is just what's going to happen. If, if you get your opponent's light square bishop and you're playing this king's Indian attack opening, this guy's just going to be a monster. That's just the truth. Now I can take, but the knight's going to take back. Instead, bishop takes here looks much better. Because now I'm threatening to win an entire row.
okay? He would win a pawn after this, which is still amazing for me. Still totally worth it. Uh, knight g6, and then bishop takes is another option. I'm trying to decide which one's best at the moment. Honestly, uh, just a simple bishop takes f7 looks, looks like it should be good enough. Knight g6, bishop f7, queen f6, right? Queen f6, and then what do I do? I've got a bishop and a knight hanging. So if I've got a bishop and a knight hanging there, I have to find a way right now to be able to save those pieces. Otherwise, knight g6 is actually not going to be worth it. It's going to lose me material. Whereas I've got the free rook right in front of me. All right, so I'm going to cash in the free rook. I'm saying, dude, can't go wrong taking a free rook. Bring the queen where though? I've got a knight here, a bishop there. Black plays here, where am I bringing my queen? I can't bring it here. This doesn't even guard the bishop, only protects the knight. So that looks like a case where it would just be you being too fancy because here I'm up an entire rook. In that position, I might lose one of my pieces and then I wouldn't be up a whole rook. I'd just have a rook for a piece. Yeah, full pint, that would be good, but remember there's also king takes knight. So, while it's a decent idea, it's not a foolproof plan. Yeah, Ilya, uh, queen f3 doesn't work, it just uh, hangs your queen, unfortunately. So let's bring the rook over. And if knight here, then you can even go f4. D4. I think it's D4 time. Was it a free B7 pawn? Well, you guys got to think about counterplay. Right. I've got two rooks, a bishop and a queen. He's got one rook, a knight and a queen. So if I take this, he moves his rook there. Let's say I go back. He takes here. All of a sudden his rook is down here, making way more threats than both of my rooks combined. And bishop takes bishop takes again, allowing the rook down there is the same thing. The rook's active. You could say I won a pawn, but remember, you're up a rook. When you're up a rook, you don't need to be winning a pawn. You've already got a rook. A rook is enough to win the game. By trying to be greedy and going for something that's more than that, trying to win a rook and then also win a pawn, nine times out of 10 in a chess game, you're just gonna allow your opponent counterplay. It's gonna get trickier to win. If you've got enough material to win the game, then you don't need to make, make fancy moves. That's a free Quinn. Now, if the position was even, let's say my opponent and I had the exact same material, I would give way more consideration to taking that. 100% I would. But when you're up material, you don't need even more. If you've got enough material that you're confident that you can win the game, then you don't need to be greedy for more. GG Batman. Put it in the win column. Well, I think it should be a lesson for sure that, or a reminder, a lesson for black, a reminder for us. If you can ever get your opponent's light squared bishop, oh baby, that's a great thing. That is a great thing. You usually have a lot of success. This bishop is just going to be so strong the rest of the game. GG well played to Switzerland. Uh, Hedera Helix, thanks for the 39 months. Resub to the channel, John DX, thanks for the nine months. Fully formed ideas, only cheese boy prime for 10 months. Take a cheese boy. All right, but yeah, this, these King's Indian uh, positions, especially when you're playing against E5, C5, this kind of stuff, that guy is public enemy number one. Thick Cheeks, hello sir. 
We've got the first episode of this uploaded to our main YouTube channel. I think it's the latest video. So it is already on our YouTube channel and they'll be up late, uploaded weekly uh, to our main YouTube channel. And they're pretty much uploaded in their entirety. There's not that many games that get clipped out. You'll see from the, uh, from the upload time that they're around one hour videos. So they're long watches, you know, probably the type of thing you might have to watch uh, a few times to get it all or that you might put on in the background while you're doing something else. Well, clean KDs obviously would be just flipped. If you're white and you're fan counting your light squared bishop, then that's the valuable piece in your opponent's position. If you're black, you're fan counting your dark squared bishop, so that's the valuable piece. Hey, chess scholar. Oh, no worries, man. Thanks for the prime. Look at that, 19 months. Appreciate the resub, dude. We're doing our King's Indian speed run here. We're up against uh, our buddy from Turkey here. Let's play G6. No, 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 no. What are you, what are you setting up here? Pay fun? So I've done this a few times so far and I, I keep saying that, you know, oh yeah, knight takes e4 and d5 is, I mean, generally white keeps allowing it. It's not like a winning tactic or anything, but white does keep allowing it in these kind of structures, and I think it's to be avoided. I'm going to keep playing it just because I think it's a nice way for black to simplify, and this bishop becomes quite strong in these positions. You really should be playing this, but instead, I often just get the, uh, I often get the light squared bishop like this. Which is great. This is a, <laughs> this is already a good sign. Let's bring this queen over here, maybe? Here, d5, rook d8. Yeah, let's put it on h5. I feel like we want to go rook d8. It'd be great if I could bring that rook to d8, but you can see my my plan is to play bishop g4. Well, he traded the bishop for a pawn because I took a pawn, so he wanted to get one back. I think bishop d3 would have been better. But you can see the idea it makes sense. Uh, knight b4 here threatens this pawn in a pretty serious way. Because I'm threatening, let's say, bishop takes c3 and then knight takes d5. And honestly, that looks... That looks pretty good. Not gonna lie. I think we're gonna go for that one instead of rook d8, which I was thinking about. Okay, he's going for some greedy stuff here. Well, I was trying to put pressure on uh, that pawn down there, so I think I'll continue. The bishops look very, very, very strong here. That, uh, something feels wrong about that. Let's start by taking the queen, which is the only defender of that knight, and then we'll take that knight. Keep in mind, after c3, we have a number of ways to keep our pieces. There's knight d5, bishop c5, bishop f6, knight c2. I have, you know, I have a lot of moves to keep the uh, material here. It's really up to me. Let's go for this one. Oh, we got Eric, uh, might be, Eric might be even uh, typing from the gym right now. Just getting a quick pump on for the boys. Song request from the gym. Oh, well, 
This is gonna be a great song request that Eric because I can already see that it's in my liked songs. Big fan, brah. It means I definitely heard it before. Let's take this. That's always a good feeling. It happens sometimes when the chat gives a song request and I see it's already in my liked songs. Uh, I know I'm gonna like the song and you guys have song requested it. So it's just a win-win. Okay, Rook's on open files. Keep it simple. Manor Monkey, are you uh, also uh, at the gym right now, sir? Man, you guys are really obsessed with pawns. Once again, dude. Bishop takes and takes here. This is one pawn. This is so irrelevant. You guys miss tactics that hang free pieces. You guys get back rank checkmated. And you guys are talking to me about free pawns. I'm up a rook here. An entire rook. That's the most irrelevant pawn I've ever seen. You guys like get mated in five moves. Focus on that, man. You guys gotta work on so much in your chest. I'm not talking about free pawns when you're up a rook. Why don't you try to play a game without a blunder and then come talk to me, pal? Seriously, when you're up a rook, don't be looking at the small stuff. Look at the big picture. Big picture, players. Big picture, please. As long as you don't blunder a full piece when you're up a rook, I promise you, you'll win the game. Like, it's just, it's just uh, much, much better to think of things that way. Let's go F6. First time chatter. Damn, I do blunder every game. It's just how it is, man. People aren't ready to have that conversation, you know? Yep, we get a little bit of a volume on the tune here. Knight e4, knight f4, knight takes f6 check, king f7, knight back to e4, rook g2 mate. Another free pawn for the chat, yep. That's you guys. All you guys talking about the free pawn are the ones that just got styled on. The same people that wanted me to take that free pawn would probably have taken that free pawn. I know it. I know it. GG. Hello to chicken pants. Hello, King's Indianers. Yeah, big free pawn there for you guys. Big free pawn there. <laughs> Honestly, pretty solid game. White keeps allowing this. I don't think it's like a winning tactic or anything, but certainly white playing without the two bishops is not often very good. Bishop back here and like this makes a bit more sense. Well, we just had Yasser in the chat, Chicken Pants. I think you missed him, or maybe you scared him off. 
Uh, he was in the chat a couple minutes ago, and I can tell you while Yasser was here, we almost lost the game. And since he's left, I've been winning. Have you guys noticed that? That can't be a coincidence, man. Damn. This is a... This is a serious account here. I am sorry the King's Indians bothering you so much, bro. But you know what I think? You know what I think it really is? I think you just don't play the King's Indian well, and you're here because you wanna, you know, you wanna cleanse yourself. You wanna find out, you wanna be shown the light. How do I play this opening? You like the opening? You know, you... you eh, See, I called it. You've been playing the King's Indian against D4 since 1800. And you're saying it sucks. You see? I knew that was the case. Now, remember, in situations like this, you gotta remember, it's often the case that the opening does not suck. You suck. I can see why you're here in the chat. You you don't want to believe that it's the opening's fault, and you're ready to admit that it's you. You're ready to admit that you could be the problem, and you're in the right place. You're in the right place, and together as a community, we will heal, cleanse, and learn why the King's Indian is a fantastic opening, and it is you that sucks. So let's get the next game and find out why. Exactly, we're here to heal. We're here to heal. King's Indian is a perfectly fine opening. With the white pieces, King's Indian attack. We go for this quick D3, and then looking for this setup. F5, I'm gonna leave it for now. Okay. Guard that. Now I have a feeling we could be, you know, getting in that territory where we start to win that material. Like, what happens if I go here? If he moves the bishop back, he's gonna lose that pawn. If he goes here, then why did he even put the bishop there? I feel like, uh, I feel, I feel like we could hop all over his light squares here. I'm just trying to find the best way to do it. Because it's all, you know, you guys know, it's always my goal. Try to win that light square bishop in the opening. So I'm going to I'm gonna start tickling them. We're going to go here. Oh, the... The song cue is filling up. There we go. Okay, well this is what I wanted, guys. Now I'm going to take. Now I'm going to take, and I'm going to put my knight here. I, I kind of want to do this just to make a point. Knight e4 is definitely the better move here. But knight e6, I feel like, uh, makes the point that even if he wins my pawn back, what does that mean? It means that I've basically traded bishop for knight. And I just finished explaining that's my, you know, ultimate goal when I'm playing King's Indian like this. If I'm fianchettoing my light square bishop, then the light square bishop in my opponent's camp is incredibly valuable. It really is. Right? So I'm going to go here. I think knight e4, knight f3, far better moves, but... We're doing this out of principle, right? It's like, go ahead, you know, have the pawn back then. It's fine, it's fine. Takes it, he's having a good time, he's happy. F4 is still a uh, still a pretty serious uh, contender. I'm gonna choose to move C3, we've done that one before. If the king castle's here, I'd like to maybe get my queen out to A4. Whoa! Whoa, whoa! Guys, I think winning that light square bishop is really getting A.B. Shakespeare going here. 
I think it's really getting them going. Monday afternoon. This is what a light squared bishop can do. Very versatile piece. You see that? Getting A, B really out of bed here. And there's a reason. There's a specific reason why A, B is so hype. Now, I noticed he also just hit a thousand gifted subs in total in the channel, but I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. That's secondary to the fact that he's excited to just be here in the crowd, part of the community, healing and watching the Kings in me. That's what's getting him so excited. It, it, I mean, he also is at a thousand gifted subs in the channel and you know, that's a lot of support and it means a lot, but surely just being here, watching the Kings Indian, that's gotta be quite special, I would say. Just a, a small loan of a thousand gifted subs. Thank you, buddy. Very, very generous. That's 99 and I think he's at 199 just for today. I am looking at this, by the way. Let's start with a very simple move. Rook d1, it's the open file that I've got. Okay, let's uh, continue. When I see this, by the way, all I'm thinking is bishop h3. Anyone else? Like, I'm literally about to go here and here and here. <laughs> I just think he'll fall for it. You know, I, I just I don't have respect for these 1500s the way I should. All right, guys, well, pack it up. Speed runs over. I got nothing. I got, you know, no tricks, nothing. We're, uh, I think we're dead. I got nothing left. If that trick doesn't work, then, you know, pack up the whole opening, man. Yeah, exactly. If, if he's not falling for a tactic, then you just say he's, must be stream sniping. Ah, has to be. He didn't blunder? Gotta be sniping. Riker Maloney's here for the, uh, the tune. Yep, if someone beats you in chess, they're definitely doing something fishy. Must be. We got a couple, uh, couple rooks incoming. Okay, this one doesn't appear to be going anywhere. Let's make a threat. Let's make a threat. Hello to Ralph Wiggum. Hopefully you're enjoying the music uh, supplied by Chief Eric Hansen. I haven't really done much with the bishops. It's all been my rooks. My rooks are doing the uh, heavy lifting here. Grusky Meerkat. Oh yeah, the the tune is a banger. Ooh, 
this looks like a capture. And he's probably gonna start moving that night, but that one doesn't help. Now my pawn's rolling down the board. Send this one. Send that guy all the way home. I'm curious what he does with that. Okay, if he goes there, then I think we can now play Brook G8 just a little faster she goes all the way over there okay a little too far this knight doesn't really have anywhere to go i feel like he's gonna do some he's gotta like hang the knight soon surely Yeah, an AP6 was helpful. Hello, Eddie. Trying to get uh, a rise out of you in the morning, buddy. You know, it's still early afternoon here. Shave Deer, thanks for gifting a sub. Assassin, 13 months. The Polish Prince for three months with Prime. King's Indian is, uh, I mean, we had a slow start. Let's not forget. We had a slow start, but we've, uh, it's only been up since then. You gotta remember that. Look on the bright side. Thank you, Polish Prince. Song name, exclamation mark, song will always work. That's right, Tiny Dinky Daffy. Let's see if we can get to 1450 here. Ooh, we're playing a uh, strong country. They make them uh, real, real strong out there. Okay. We're, we're, we're at least getting something that looks like a... And is this... Should, should I just be playing this again? I mean, it's hard to say no. It's hard to say no to that. It just keeps being offered. We're excited to see you, buddy. Okay, so we won a pawn. It's not my proudest pawn. Uh, it's weird to me that no one is playing this move, but okay. You know, Bishop H6 is coming. There's still going to be some, uh, some serious things to reckon with. I'm thinking about trying to take that guy. You know, things like knight a5, 
come to mind. I want to play e5 pretty badly, but this uh, this guy right there is annoying. Hello to Basmania. Let's bring our knight in, meanwhile. This threat, I assume, will get him playing queen c1. And it does. Hmm. How to continue here? Bishop here, you know, if knight g3, I might even go just queen d5. Okay, he's staying pretty, uh, pretty solid. I really want the move e5. I need to do something to make that happen. Whether it's queen d7 or queen d6, I think we'll start with this. Yeah, this this needs to happen. This move right here. Can it happen right now? Or do we need more prep? <laughs> e5 is like just necessary for my position. It would help a lot. e5 and make it work believe me i that's often how i think about chess positions yeah i'll just do this and make it work it's uh, not the best way to think of it. i can promise you that but i do it too i do it too yeah what i'm what i'm really trying to do is uh e5 take you know, knight takes knight takes e4 and see if we can get that position to go. I think it will. I think it will. We just need to make sure we don't allow knight f6. That's the only thing. That would be the bad thing. If he takes here though, then then we're fine. Why am I trying to play e5 so much? Well, I got double pawns. Like, I, I have sense that he's gonna win this pawn back. It's kind of hard to keep defended. He can keep attacking it as much as he wants. But, if I get rid of my double pawns, open up my bishop, which is the whole point of the king's Indian, using that g7 bishop, then I will, uh, then I'll be happier in the middle game. Yeah, I think we want to just take this. Rook e8 is a move that prepares e5, but it doesn't do anything to guard my pawn. So I wanted to do this before it was too late. Like white's pieces still aren't as good as mine. Knight there. And this is the move I didn't want to allow. Knight to f6. So I'm gonna play queen here, which guards that square and hits the knight. And I'm definitely gonna get a rook on e8. R2 will be out this week, their Wicked Julian. They'll be released uh, weekly on YouTube. Alright, knight g3, you know, bishop h3 definitely looks like a tempting move. Eh, eh, eh. Not a very good one though. That's the type of fancy move that you play and it just backfires immediately. Bishop h3, bishop e4. Cute looking, but nothing more than that. Um, yeah, I think probably just take, honestly. Take, the only other move I'd consider is bishop d3, but I think taking is simpler. Let's go rook e8. Bishop is still better than his, so I much prefer to have this. Uh, but I need to somehow loosen up these pawns, maybe you know, a5, a4, b5, b4, stuff like that. Let's play b5. Might fall off with that, knight into c4. 
Hey Andy. Andy is Yoda. What's up, player? Brew Wayne's in 50 month reset. Thank you, Brew Wayne's in. Yeah, 50 months is a while. Absolutely. Thinking of this, doubling the rooks. That e file is going to be pretty important in this game. When in doubt, full send the edge pawns. Well, I don't know about full send, but you might not be wrong. H6 and A5 are both pretty decent looking moves here. H6 and King H7 will be familiar just in terms of this setup. King's Indian setup we've been doing in general. A5, A4. Trying to loosen up the C4 square. It's a very common thing. If there's a pawn guarding a square you want, Bring a pawn to uh, try to distract it on the other side. Well, offhand, this feels like it should be too much. So that guy's hanging, and there is also f5, h6, lots of moves coming for me. He should be surviving this. It doesn't feel like he should be. Mm -hmm. Check. Ninety three. And I mean, f6 is still covered. Of course, my bishop is a little far from my king now, but this knight's attacked and needs to move and can't move there. That's pretty much all I need to see to be happy. Easy to please. Also, f5 does a good job at, uh, at handling the position. Oh, okay, let's uh, take that. Still pinned, by the way, to the queen, so... Okay, he's getting uh, really thirsty for you. <laughs> he's getting really thirsty for these moves. It's a race! You're gonna checkmate me in one, but I'm gonna checkmate you in one first! Close call. We did hit our 1450. Okay, it's a nice little, uh, you know, starting milestone for the for the stream. We went down, but not without a pretty pretty strong game. Right, this was solid all around. Uh, I still think it's strange that people keep allowing this, but it seems like it's very common that people put put their bishop on c4. If they put their bishop on d3, then it would be a different story. Take the KO. Gotta take him where you can get him. Do you guys remember the first game of the stream today when Yasser was watching? You gotta take the wins against 1400s where you can get them, because you might not get them. <laughs> you might not get them at all. Thanks, uh, John Renat 101 for the three months. Granddaddy badge, eh, Brew Wayne's in? Is that, uh, is that happening soon? Congratulations, man. Exciting stuff. Yeah, that draw is, uh, is currently worth more than all those wins combined. I'm most proud of my draw in this speedrun so far. 1450, let's keep going. 
Let's keep going. We're actually gonna get a King's Indian, right? A pure one. Nope. Not quite. Now, I've been talking about how important it is to get the Dark Square Bishop if I'm Fianchettoing my Dark Square Bishop. My opponent has just done that for me. I've got it. This is, uh, this should already be a fantastic start. Now, what's going on here with this? D5. Aren't you in trouble here, dude? Aren't you in trouble here, dude? Isn't this just a pawn for me? Okay. Well, this was an opening success. Which one? Not sure. Take with the bishop. Guess he wants to play this, but... It's a very, very aggressive move. Let's bring that guy back this way. I know it's tempting there, but I like... Uh, Aiming at the king here. He seems like a, a guy who could definitely get mated. I just sense that. I sense the weakness. Okay, we'll start with the queen here. Gotta be knight f3. Whoa, okay, that... <laughs> There's definitely some weaknesses now, that's for sure. Let's attack this, but really I just want to get developed and double my rooks. F5 should never uh, never concern you because it's not uh, not really that serious of a move. It'll get mated every time. The knight going to the wrong side of the board, in my opinion. I'm looking at this. Does it work? You guys all want to play bishop takes h3. I know it. All of you want to play it, for no reason at all. I know you do. You just won't rest until... Until Bishop B... I know it's on your mind, it's all you're thinking about. No one here is thinking, oh yeah, I just want to play, you know, nice little Bishop D7, bring the pieces over. No, no one's thinking that. Everyone's just thinking, full steam ahead. We're going to show exactly why patience is the most valuable. Patience, guys. Very important. Here. Bishop d7 and simply rook e8. Now, for example, if I do this, well, I could bring my other rook into e3. And that would actually be a pretty serious follow-up. To a move like that. So now it might make just a little bit more sense. Right? I've uh, improved my chances here by bringing this rook in. Amadon, I think if you saw the game, you would agree that it was generous of them to give me a draw. <laughs> Definitely generous of them. Exactly. You lack discipline. South Park episode. Okay. Where's the win? Where is my win? Queen G4 looks you know, pretty good. I think it's got to be queen g4. So let's do it. Queen e6 into g4. We can expect something like this, which will walk right into it. And it helps uh, to make a threat. Oh, dude, you're not supposed to be playing good moves like that. 
check to you, bro. Whoa! Ooh, okay, I didn't expect that one. Didn't expect that one. Gotta be honest. Well, I think the only way to recover now is to make sure we mate with the bishop. Somehow we gotta work this bishop in there. Okay. Hmm. Well, <laughs> that's definitely gonna be taken. Rook H2, pretty good alternative though, I gotta say. I mean, this is a pretty reasonable one, right? Jack. Jack. This move for no reason at all. Just kind of like throw in some more material so that our win looks more impressive. Because now that I'm down, you know, two rooks and a piece, this looks brilliant. <laughs> We're down two rooks and a piece. Whoa! Unreal! A lot of good mates there though. Um, I think Rook H2 was also available after Queen E6. Something like this. So there were there were a few nice ones, but not made in one, but too, of course, look for better. So this is a kind of choose your own adventure. There was a, a lot of good stuff, but you guys would have played bishop takes h3 and squandered it. Just bishop d7, dude. Get that rook over, open file, then you've got every single piece working for you, and the tactics are gonna play themselves. Truly are. All right. What What is this, uh, this opening? So far, every time I've seen this opening played, it's lost almost immediately. Usually white ends up losing a piece in this line. Like the rook goes to e8 and, you know, white's just not equipped to deal with, uh, with this very, very quick rook e8 move hitting the pawn. Correct, Andy. Always sacrifice your pieces to make your checkmate look more beautiful. Right, Mark G. Let's go. D3, the move that no one expects. Okay, H3, King H2. Well, we could even uh, wait for that move until the next one. Like something like c3, for example. Queen d7. And then king h2. We want to make this move anyway. Knight h4. Oh. What is that move? So I was saying... In my head, wow, my opponent's uh, doing a good job. He played h6, so now he can play this, right? And there's no knight g5 to win the bishop. And then they go here. And he lets me play knight g5, winning the bishop. <laughs> this is great. I'm certainly happy to take that. 
You know, the other thing that has been very successful for me is I always end up winning, not always, but damn near always end up winning this bishop, right? This is the way that that bishop gets trapped, but it just so happens to be the case that, you know, move like a4, they sometimes forget what I'm up to. I hope that that's the case here. And he's played h4, sort of like, oh, what's that move? Oh, forget that, that does nothing. Yeah, let's calculate here. Takes, takes, everybody's over here. You know, and then he's thinking, oh, the knight's there though. Okay, maybe knight h7, get rid of that. Right, and it works. Every time, just every time. You just play a4. Now, a lot of you noobs in the chat, would play b4 because it attacks the bishop and then after the bishop moves you play a4 and then the guy would see those two pawns and he would see a5 coming he'd be like oh well damn and he'd play a6 and you wouldn't win a bishop but if you play a4 first he's like dude what you know what are those moves i don't even see what you're up to and he doesn't notice until it's too late and now it's too late E6, eh? maybe rook, rook A6, queen A4 here. Yeah, I think I'll just keep the rook all the way back. So don't play the obvious move that just threatens the piece. Play the move that's going to threaten the piece. It'll work pretty nicely. All right, back over here to this side of the board. We certainly did well on the other side. I mean, we won material. That's the... <laughs> ultimate thing you can do in chess. Let's bring our other knight over. Takes, we're gonna take back with the pawn. But also we can start just trading pieces. The reason I haven't played knight takes bishops, I don't have to. That bishop is uh, not going anywhere, right? So I can take it whenever I want to. At the moment, taking it, maybe it opens the f-file, he might want that for something. So I'm just gonna delay it as long as possible. Same thing, like sometimes people go knight c7 and they fork, let's say, two rooks, and then black makes a move like this, and white takes the knight from c7 and captures one of the rooks. Now, if you're forking two of your opponent's pieces, what you want them to do is move one of them, then you take the rook, and then they move the same piece again to capture it back. So it's the same concept. Like here, I don't need to be capturing this bishop unless it gives me something that I want immediately. Right? Unless it immediately changes the position in a favorable way, there's no need to rush this. As soon as he makes a move like this, where the bishop might escape, yeah, okay, then I might take it. Like this. Now I'll take it. But if I had taken it way back here, then he could have played pawn takes, bishop takes. He wouldn't have to make this stupid knight move and that stupid pawn move just to make me do a move that I wanted to do anyway. As a result, okay, I get the bishop all the same. But he's wasted like a bunch of moves. His knight is now trapped, by the way. King F7. Well, in positions like this, it's usually the best thing to just try to get the position completely wide open. So, d4, first move that comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, remember, this bishop is a princess. It only moves if it's winning material or delivering checkmate. <laughs> you know, it doesn't like to move for anything. Anything else? Oh, this looks like uh, maybe a good example. Spring to life, and I believe we're gonna be winning material here. Material will only be won. Throw in some E5. Yeah, so at this point, I could lose all these pawns, it wouldn't matter. The position is getting open and, and that's all we need. That's all we need. 
We want this check, or even just take that rook. A lot of nice options here. But yeah, we got a whole rook hanging. I think we'll keep this on for now. Queen F3 looks pretty tempting. Just because it offers to trade queens and threatens the rook. And it also threatens the knight on F6. Seems to get the job done. Trades we like. We like those. We like trades. Rook c6. And I think bishop f6, even though it corrects his pawns, you have to remember, like, <laughs> I am up a full rook. So it should really be enough. One, two, and three. Here we should probably play b5. Well, this one, I think we're gonna slowly uh, work him to the back rank here. Oh, that's a that's a move, I guess. Oh, he was gonna play here. He's letting me mate him! Yay! Alright, GG. He's letting me checkmate him on the back rank. Nice guy. He let me checkmate him on my back rank. It's even better. This game was, once again, very one-sided. Just out of the opening. Honestly, the E45 positions that we're getting are working extremely well. You've seen, number one, people sometimes don't play h6 and they lose their light squared bishop, or they play h6, h5. But how many times have I won a piece with just a4 here? This is like a guaranteed piece. Not b4. Because then you go here and they're like, oh, that's pretty scary, I should go, you know, and they stop you. Still good position for white, but a4 just accomplishes the same thing, but it comes with a pretty serious threat. Well, uh, Nomi, you're saying that it's uh, obvious that the games are one-sided, but you don't know what side I'm talking about. Because trust me, uh, we've had a game today that was very one-sided and uh, not for me. So no, there's a, no guarantee it's one-sided for me in these matches, but it, it is a guarantee that it's one-sided, that's for sure. <laughs> if I'm playing a 1400, I can promise you that it will be a one-sided game. Seven months, Aruba. Aruba Medic Knightly, thank you for the prime sub with 27 months. Evil Gwyn, 13 months. And Pechontos with the brand new prime sub. <clears throat> Appreciate it. New primes, fresh primes. Exclamation mark prime if you want to follow the footsteps of Tichontos. If you want to be like Big T and use that free prime stuff right here on the channel we also got some follows another free thing to do following the channel right here on twitch click that heart button if you're a youtube viewer maybe you're uh, spending your first time here feel free to say hi i know there's been a few of those lately the speed run first episode <clears throat> first episode made it on youtube so the people there have also seen the speed run maybe they're coming here on twitch to check it out Archags, duck. 
hello to Andy. We've got a few Andys in the chat. A few chat Andys. <clears throat> Why did you choose to share a channel with Eric instead of creating your own? Magic Carp, I could ask you the same thing about your girlfriend, but you know, I didn't decide to go there, did I? I think it's uh, everyone's entitled to their own choices, but at the end of the day, I think it's worked out. It means the stream can always be on. You know, if someone gets burnt out, there's someone else to tag in, take their place. So it means, in general, just more streams, which is better for the viewer. More streams, get less burnt out. Plus Eric is someone I've known for a while, so yeah, it could be. Could could have our own channels, but I think there's some good things about it. And maybe there's some bad things as well, you know? Obviously there are some people in the chat who are gonna be like, oh, that Amon guy, not a fan. Let me know when Eric is streaming and I'll be back. Sorry, man, I get it. It, you know, we're forcing to be a fan of two people instead of one. But the good part is I don't care about you. I don't care about you. We'll see you when Eric streams then. <laughs> don't bother me none. What if you're a fan of both? Nah, then, then you, you must be lying. We don't have any of those. Yeah, the Malone Ranger, you're a fan of David the Legend, I tell you, he's been waiting a couple years to see him. But there's a lot of reasons people watch the channel. I think we have a very diverse channel for a reason. So the fact that there's multiple people streaming makes even more sense, probably. Because some people here are here just for the music. They just like the tunes, the vibes. Some people are here for the community, joining the Discord, you know, hanging out with people, watching like movies, shows in our Discord, chatting. You know, some people have made some pretty good friendships in there. Some people are here for the actual chess. <laughs> Sorry, I could, could barely, barely say that with a straight face. No, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, but some people are, are here for, you know, the, the YouTube content as well. So, you know, everyone has their reasons. Everyone has their reasons. And it's not always the exact same reason. Some people might be here for Eric, for me, for Dan. Some people might be here for Yasser, for Big Dill, for David the Legend. Some people might be here for Robin Van Campen. You just never know. But no one reason is better than the other. Unless you're here for me, in which case that is the best reason. And you are correct. We have a lot of uh, guests on the channel, right? So a lot of personalities to get used to. Isn't this Hikaru's channel? Did I come to the wrong place? Well, yes, you did come to the wrong place. But I'll give you a, a little trick for next time. In case you're wondering, you don't want to get them confused. I understand. You know, sometimes when I'm streaming and Hikaru's streaming, you're looking at the, the cameras, you know, and they kind of look like the same person. I'll give you a little trick. Head over to the uh, past broadcasts and try to watch a VOD. And if you can watch a VOD, then it's my channel. That's it. That's the trick. That's just a little, little trick for you to use next time so you don't have to ask, you know. In case I don't see your message, I'm not able to answer you quickly. You can just use that little trick to figure it out. So hopefully that helps you there, bud. Yeah, well, Wild Hacks, you know, these are also 1100s here, you know, 1000s. They might not be able to tell the difference. 
Otherwise, that would be a great indication as well. Am I in queue? Walter, I am now in queue. Thanks to you. For you, Walter. This game is dedicated to Walter Der Spalter, 420. The entire game dedicated to him. E3. Let's get uh, G3 with D5 and D2. Well, he's excited to play this move, but we're excited as well. We got H3 in there. Oh, this is fantastic, guys. Oh, he's so thirsty for this pawn. Yes, baby. Just give me a... Uh... You know how sometimes on the dating apps, they have the, uh... They have the, you know, the, the ladies sometimes, they write, uh, you know... Um, buy me food and call me pretty. I have the same thing for, for positions like this, you know. Give me the light squared bishop and call me pretty. That'll do. And so far, my opponent's giving me the light squared bishop. That's a good start. Now, let's see if we can improve on that. Ooh, interesting. Well, my opponent has achieved... Uh, something that is uh, decently rare in chess with these uh, triple pawns, although I, I believe it'll only be for a, a fleeting moment here as I recapture this. And I'm uh, definitely tempted by this uh, this move, queen h5 here. It seems like it might force a uh, queen exchange, which could be favorable for moi. But if I do that, then the chat is gonna call me low T. So yeah, never mind. We should go here. These moves, by the way, are really gonna hurt if he castles that way. So <laughs> look, I get it, man. <laughs> I understand. He wants to go this way. He didn't want to deal with it. That makes sense to me. I think I'm still gonna play B4 just to uh, tickle that guy, let him know what's up. Now, Black has a pretty simple idea. He wants to go Rook F6, he wants to go Rook F8. Look, I get it, I get it. Now, how am I gonna meet that? I have F3 at all times to just put my pawn on a safe square. I don't love to trade bishops, but I think I might have to, just when rook f6 comes. What I'd like to do is queen here, queen here and like go for some mate, but queen here, rook f6, I don't have bishop h6, and I don't have queen g6. So it's kind of tough for me to, uh, to continue to prosecute the advantage. First things first, I'm gonna put my king on a light square. And then I'm gonna play this move, bishop e3. Nidhogg, 48 months. Thank you to King Nidhogg. Appreciate you, bud. Am I gonna take like this? Yes, I am. Oh, just hanging out in uh, Toronto, your neck of the woods there, uh, Nidhogg. Thanks for the four years. Yeah, 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 we'll definitely do it, man. In New York right now, okay, big living. Now, H4, rook takes, they all look pretty good. Let's start by taking here, question mark. Do I care about this? Don't think so. Don't think so. The thing is, if he goes here, he doesn't have any entry uh, points, so I think we can continue firing our pawns here. Let's 
let's start with h4. Yeah, really tempted by uh, that one there. Okay. C4. Take that square away. A5. Eh. It's gonna get pretty messy, isn't it? I almost wanna play this. King here. Probably not a bad move. Let's go for the mess. Let's go for the mess. A5. You have a nice kind of like looking position. But <laughs> that's kind of it. It just looks like it should be good. Unfortunately, that one can't be helping uh, my opponent too much. Just the fact that I have this pawn now, it's gotta be rough. Let's go here and rook c5. Oh. He's not even, uh, he's not even stopping me. Damn. Can't go there yet. Uh. Check. And we have to keep pushing. This would be great. Just splendid. Do we see that? You know what I might do? I might go King G1 and... Oh, wait. He's doing it! He wasn't supposed to actually do it. Like, for real do it. supposed to do it for real. I just suggested it. Like, it wasn't supposed to be uh, when stream sniping goes wrong, Captain. That's unfortunate. I thought he might go here. Queen f6 is a little nicer. And what I was planning to do after queen f6 was probably nothing too special, but <laughs> I was thinking of going here and trying to somehow uh, get a checkmate in here with my queen like that. But unfortunately, we didn't get to experience that thrill. Well, the account's name is Speed Only. So people have to understand that although White played a solid game the entire time, all I was excited for was the last five seconds of the game. That's, that's when I play much better than the entire game combined. Saw Speed Only and he was like, nah. <laughs> I believe you, bro. I believe you, bro. Hey dog, thanks again for the 48 months. We'll uh, we'll definitely uh, do something soon. Let me know when you're back, man. Send me a message, uh, Discord or something. Valley Chess, thanks for the prime sub. John or not with 100 bits. Walter, there's Walter 420, subbed with uh, Prime. Was it Prime? No, it was someone else. Sorry. Walter subbed even more of a step. He subbed without Prime. He reached in and he said, you know what? You're dedicating this game to me, I'm subbing, and Walter, I saw that sub, and that's why I couldn't lose that game for you, buddy. This game was dedicated to Walter. Why to jump? Thanks for 13 months with Prime. CP Shank half a year with Prime. Niles Monkey Man, two months with Prime as well. Galadrius gets a tier three gifted sub from JC Digital Girl. Mr. McCabe, thanks for two months. It's very kind of you there, JC. And Ethanol, thanks for the Dalla Hala Devil Ward 007. Thanks for a full year resub to the channel. Go, oh, Walter. Let's get another game. Did we, um, I think we added that. 
Did I? Did I add that game to the win column from 78 to 79? Hmm. Really can't remember. I think I did. No? Good. See, that's why I have the chat. And even if you guys are wrong, it doesn't matter. The number is only getting higher. So, this is only a good thing, even if it's not true. Eighty wins, we'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Too many wins, can't keep count. Of course, of course. Let's get another one. Speaking of those wins, we're at fourteen seventy-five, so we're making our push here for fifteen hundred. I think my opponent is uh, pretty much getting developed in one of the most basic ways, right? This is this is just good stuff. So let's take and do something we've done before, which is uh, play in the dark squares. Whoa! Excuse me, sir. G5, eh? I guess that works. He's got knight d5. Kind of surprising. Here, here. Takes, there's knight d5. First of all, if I don't take the knight, and I take either one of these, he takes here, and I'm gonna be down a piece. Queen takes, he still has knight d5. He is a major, major beast. Pretty uh, surprising I can't take that. So anyway, I think we'll have to take somewhere else, like e4. Or even knight h5 is a good move too. But uh, that's unfortunate, I really wanted to take here. So knight takes e4, and then pawn takes d4. It's kind of what I'm thinking, but knight takes e4. It just gets so messy there. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good enough. Hmm. Looks like no fun for me. You just have to play a normal, regular good move. Yeah, knight h5 is the move that you should just play in general. And anything else is if you can, if you find better. Like Once again, we're playing a King's Indian and we've got his Dark Square Bishop. We can't get out our Dark Square Bishop, we got his Dark Square Bishop. This is already a great sign. A lot of places I could put this Queen, but... I'm willing to bet that he does not want a Queen trade. And if he doesn't want a Queen trade... He might... Yeah, he might go here, and now if he castles, I can always take this pawn. I think his position is not so easy to play. Hey, Brad. Hey, can I, uh, can I get you anything? I'm not sure if there's, uh, there's maybe a coffee I can have. Yeah, what kind, yeah. Of, what kind of coffee are you looking for? Oh, I'll take something with some milk. Uh, okay. Any of the options, really, but I'll take a, take a hearty uh, cauldron coffee. Okay, okay, you get know. some volume. Get some volume in there, exactly. Just to uh, match the volume you've got uh, going on over there no, as well. No, no volume here. No volume. Just uh, just saying hi hi to the viewers. Uh, they've been uh, well behaved. Man, you got six thousand. It's uh, surprising that they've been well behaved. I think it's Monday. But it's too early in the week to misbehave for some people. Oh, your friend, Mr. Nidhogg's there. Did you know that? I did. Yeah, he resubbed for four years, and of all places, when we come here, he's in New York. I think he's hiding. Yep, yep, definitely. All right, I'll get you a coffee. That sounds uh, great. I got some stuff from the bakery. That also sounds great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> for Poach gets it. Well, I was gonna say, the limited, you know, I have to time them between Okay, I want, I want you to try something. Yeah, you it's can. Not, it's not caloric, but you don't have to have a lot of it. Okay. 
Okay. Very yoked, uh, Pasa, no? Super yoked. Alright. Uh, check here. Or Bishop H6 in here. Obviously, Bishop H6, because this trades pieces, and that's, uh, it's gonna pan out. solid overall. I mean, if we get this, I feel like we're, I feel like we're really saying hi. Honestly, I ain't scared. Hey, Warshot. What is this? Am I supposed to be scared now? Is this where... Remember what I told you guys when you open up the H file? As soon as you play King G7, you're the one that uses the H file more than White. Like, <laughs> it just tends to work out well. This is a rather cheeky move. Rather cheeky. Ugh. We're gonna have to play this. I have to play this, c4, put our bishop on f4 to defend that. Some like uh, kind of high octane uh, moves here from the from the lad. He's a he's the full package, you know. He's the full package right now. Kind of open some things up for myself. I think. Gotta get a little something going on. Just even like a diagonal, <laughs> just something. Something for me. Actually, we can, we can go uh, E2 here. That's a pass pawn that, you know, you can sacrifice for it, but that's it. I think I might go B4 next. Take that, surely. And after his great game, he imploded. I will say that, you know, it doesn't matter what, how strong of a player I actually am when I'm doing this. At the end of the day, people don't necessarily know that that's the case. So they think they're just playing 1500. And I have to say that what always happens is my opponents frequently play a fantastic game but then when they see that i'm low on time like i'm about to flag and they start making mistakes so i would advise you to be on the lookout if you're if you're low on time flagging your opponents are probably actually going to be riddling their positions with mistakes it just happens they get excited that they're going to flag you so the quality of their moves goes down as the speed increases thanks for the raid Fortnick chess Alexander, appreciate it. 114 people. Welcome to the speed run. Welcome to a Monday stream. Chess Brawl Rarity. Thank you for the shout out there, uh, Worship. Appreciate the big raid. Yeah, we're doing a King's Indian speed run here. I call it a speed run. I keep track of the wins and whatnot, but really just here to teach you a few things about the setup as white and as black. Let's see if we can't learn a thing or two. I think it's easy enough that you guys could start using it in your games as, as early as, you know, the first time after you see it. Like, I, I think it's plug and play. Some of the setups we're going for. King's Indian attack with white, King's Indian defense with black. Shout out to boarding for the raid. Welcome, guys. Adidin, thanks for the five gifted subs. Appreciate that. Yeah, I feel like uh, when, when you make a new account and do this, like everyone just calls it speedrun. I mean, that's just, you know, when we when we did the first speedrun, that's the point of it. It's like, yeah, you want to do it as fast as possible. But 
Soon after I realized it became less interesting for me to do it as fast as possible and I actually wanted to play, play some five minute games, which is what we're doing here. Take a bit more time, explain it a bit more and use the fact that I'm lower rated because of the Smurf account to actually teach some more instructive moments that I simply can't teach when I'm playing at 26, 7, 800. Like, they just don't exist. I can't show them because they're not there. So I call it a speed run, but really it's just like a, I don't know, just, just a low rated account where we're learning pretty much. <laughs> but that doesn't sound as good. So speed run it is. just a run. It's a, it's a walk. Informative Smurf run. Yeah, I think we need to work on the game a little bit, or the name a little bit, guys. Not sure I can use any of these suggestions. It's okay. By the end of the speed run, we'll have a better name for it. Uh, hello to Ranji TV. Hi, sir. Hello. Wow. Some uh, serious stuff here. Thank you. This so, looks great. Some volume, I appreciate. I got a couple of things for you to try. A couple of jars. This was the strawberry shortcake. Yeah, the yeah, so it's easy. I assume that's. So these are not caloric? <laughs> <laughs> You're trolling, no? <laughs> this is the cake. I have, I, I have carrot, I have carrot cake. <laughs> this is the cake. But Mo eats them. He doesn't look caloric. Right, show, show it to the camera. Mo, Mo, Mo this is a, There's no way that's no, What I meant is like, the way I'm serving it means you can just have a bite. <laughs> that's what I meant. You don't have to eat the whole thing. You just have a tiny spoon and you can just like, have a little small bite. Especially McDonald's is not caloric if you only have one bite. <laughs> but Moj is eating these and look at him. Look at the unit. This is a, a part Moj of the diet. Moj destroyed these last time. <laughs> I didn't get I didn't have a single it. bite and look at him. Get a date today amazing. at 1.30. A Monday, 1.30 date is a record. Monday is the worst day of the week for dates. And securing at 1.30. There's another one at 8. <laughs> no, 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 I'm here eating fucking sprinkles. Because of what Moj is doing right now. That's the point. Just to give you a little bit of food while you have the coffee. Just, just a couple small bites. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, they'd have to be pretty small bites. This, this uh, pretty, it is good though. Yeah, it's good, but it's pretty, uh, it's very sweet. Oh, okay. I, hadn't ha I didn't. Oh, Peko, five gifted subs. But um, there's carrot cake if you want something. <laughs> I, I like carrot cake. I or think Amon will like that more. I've had it before. Well, you had the whole thing. <laughs> you had the whole oh, thing. Yeah. Nobody had it. <laughs> oh, you didn't even have a little bit? No. <laughs> you know what? You had the, he knows it. There's nobody else in the house. <laughs> I've had it before. Yeah. Alan says hi. Yeah. Strawberry shortcake. Each one's going to get a try. <laughs> yes, get, get some strawberry. So good. <laughs> Not excited about this. What? I know Mojo like this, that's why I figured. We need to eat what the alphas eat to get to that level. <laughs> you gotta as Ronnie. But I don't think I can Ronnie Coleman said you gotta eat big like, to get big, right? But I don't think I can handle the diet of the, the alphas. The you alphas? Know? It's uh that's why I'll never be like that, bro. Okay, I'll take that I I haven't had it either. I, I just wanted you to try it. Just... Ronnie Coleman also says everyone wants to be big, but no one wants to lift heavy weights. That's right. Light work, baby. That's right. <laughs> oh no we got okay i'm gonna have to hand these back okay well this one is not just not for me i just don't like strawberry short and he thought you'd like that no if i'm uh, i have a sweet tooth though then this is probably a good one okay the cake one is actually like it's tasty okay. but okay i'm just not much of a well he's birthday bro will be consumed by some of these <laughs> so we don't have to worry about them being wasted <laughs> Wait, by the way, this is, is this on purpose? It's supposed to be a smiley face? Can I use that? Yes. Uh, yeah. That's how shots are done. <laughs> Alrighty. Smiles. I don't want to interrupt it much longer. I just want to... really saying hi, eh? Yep. Thanks, bro. There we go. Just made a smiley face in the coffee. 
It looks a little creepy to be honest. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that. Uh... Well, we might be moving some stuff in here, right? Oh yeah, feel free. Performance enhancing yogurt. I think the coffee would be uh, performance enhancing, honestly. Coffee, I think, is gonna help. Yeah, I poured it longer than normal, so let me know if it, uh, that's okay. Oh, it's great. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay, now we know the settings for a while. Hello to Matt. Yep. Jason York, I'm already playing 1500s and you're saying hand and brain. You wanna get two GMs in here to take down a 1400 dude? Seems a bit overkill, eh? Jason uh, gives uh, maybe uh, an X amount of subs. I can jump in for one game. <laughs> Jason York, what's it worth to you, bruh? So the coffee is great, but I think it's just me, guys. I just don't have a sweet tooth. Anyone else? Anyone else? You know what? I guess it's hard to show them, but like it's kind of like whipped cream sprinkles, like uh, cookie dough. I don't know, cookie crumble, this kind of stuff. It's just uh, it's just it's not very like uh, it doesn't get me going. For me, I think it's uh, chips. I could destroy like four bags of Miss Vicky's. Just nonstop, but that's about it. Like ice cream, candy, chocolate, cake. I don't dislike this stuff, but I don't like it. I, I would never choose to have it. When I was younger, it was a lot different, but I don't really eat much of that stuff at all. Man or Monkey, you and I uh, were on that diet before, remember? You know? That was good times, eh? We got nice and skinny. However, chips, Miss Vicky's chips, are always gonna get me. I will destroy a Miss Vicky's bag. Definitely the case, Mathisco. Echo, thanks for the five subs. Congrats, what was it? I know you just mentioned it, but you beat an IM, you were saying? In the Blitz pool? Pecco was the guy we were spectating on uh, Sunday night yesterday. He was trying to hit 2400. So congrats, uh, Pecco, and thanks for the five subs. Also, uh, Jason York, 61, five gifted subs. Jason York, how about if you find someone to match you, and we make it happen. And Eric's around, so it'll be whenever I can get him up here. I think he's uh, moving some boxes right now. But you got it, man. You started the energy. Jason York, 61, find a co-investor. Find a co-investor. You've started it off. Thanks for the five, man. 29 Ronito, thanks for the 12 months as well. Full year, a full year from... Uh, my buddy, 29. Yeah, King's Indian is not part of my top level repertoire, I'll say that. But I think that a lot of things can work pretty cookie cutter up to a certain level. We're at 1484. Let's see if we can keep it going here. E5, okay. Knight f3. Oh, great timing. Hey, bud. Hey. I, uh, Are you uh, free for a game? I am free for a game. I'm just gonna play the first move so that I force I force you into the lines that we've been uh, playing. Yeah, the buff lads are in the back. Exactly. Thank you, JC Digital Girl, and uh, Jason York. All right. So 
so we pretty much got the setup here. Okay. We'll do a do a hand and brain. Sure. For this game against that young gay, young gay. Oh, young gay. Yeah. Against young gay, and uh, see if we can handle him here. <laughs> do I get? Am I the brain or hand? You're the brain. Um, pawn. On. Yeah. Thinking that as well, yeah. Just trying to keep the pieces on the board uh, against Young Gay here. On, please. I think you uh, stepped in at a great time. I think based on the uh, attire you're wearing, Young Gay might be a little distracted. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. I Matter think, Monkey uh, says it's interesting what I'm wearing. What is he implying? Let's do pawn. <laughs> uh, I'm liking this. Let's go. Knight. Oh, exactly, Jason York. Yeah, you can. Uh, you can see uh, he's really taking up some real estate on cam here. Let's do Bishop. And then let's go Queen. Mm. Something that uh, our buddy here might not be able to handle. Give away our bishop uh, lightly, right? But uh, we got some ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly, tricky trimmer. You guys think it's tough for you? What about me? Let's go, knight. We should uh, <laughs> create a position where he's going to make some blunders. Yep. We'll jump in there, uh, vice versa, exactly. You got to work on your notation, buddy. Knight E6. Actually, we just missed the WrestleMania. Did you catch any of the highlights? Uh, no, but I knew we missed it as well because it was showing up on 5 TV or something. <laughs> 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 WrestleMania. Brock was headlining, but Pat, Jeez. Pat McAfee was there. They had a bunch of uh, special guests. It was wow! A big event. That's I know exciting. some people uh, who attend those. Uh, good time. Um. Low Canadian rock band. Let's go. The show. This is rated, right? This counts. It's, it's all. The, it's gonna go on the spreadsheet. Yep. Part of the speed run. Yep. Yeah. You can tell who's got the headphones on right now. My head's bobbing, and Eric's just uh, focused on Young Gay here. Yep. Giving him the full attention. Let's go Bishop again. <laughs> I knew that would get you to laugh. That's <laughs> <laughs> oriented. 
on. Um, let's go. Bishop. Sometimes you gotta cash in. That's correct, actually, Canadian rock fan. Very good comment by you. Let's do night. Get all the pieces in. How's everyone doing? I think uh, just some some names we haven't uh, seen. You know, Monday afternoon names. Yeah. Checking in today. Yeah, Great busy, to see. Busy, busy bees. Let's go uh, night. I think we have to. They're attacking our night. There. We gotta do something about it. Hey, Redson. Hey, Spudge. Um. <laughs> gonna be a queen <laughs> looks like the uh, intel just came in and it's queen yes yeah 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 ding dong there we go that was a good time <laughs> there you go very impressive you're um good you contractor for hire you're, are you surprised young gay allowed uh, an early mate no not surprised that young gay allowed a quick quick and a quick finish uh, Quick finish, quick penetration from two guys here. Okay. Definitely something that... uh, I was expecting. We just got five subs. Hashgul. JC Digital Girl as well. So JC and uh, Thank you, Jason Dwork uh, teamed up. JC, Jason, Hashkai, Solar Tide, Bob, Surrogate. Thank you. I was good. Um, I'm around. That's I'm great. You're as, for hire. I'm yeah. task oriented, as your friend Mannered Monkey said. So if there's a task, just let me know and uh, I'll keep the. Uh, you might have to keep the lifting the in the entire, background. I'll keep, the, keep entire, the pump going. I'll keep the pump going. That's right. Great. I'll let you know if uh, there's any uh, any guys uh, available. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. I'll be I'll be around. There you go, Jason York. Cheers, buddy. Thanks for the subs, JC as well. Got a little tag team here on the the speed run. What's the rating goal today? Today, probably. I think we're gonna go for 16. Oh, okay. So we still got some. Uh... Yep. I think I'm gonna go for an extended mix. Okay. I'll be around. Thanks for the subs. And every time uh, Eric joins the stream, you get to see him lift the chair uh, away. So it's a bonus for you guys. That was a long range queen move, but we got it done. The next game, it depends on the rating, guys, but it might be, might be the case that we can uh, get to, to 1500 right here. Depends who we play. I have to play a higher rated player. Party Poker TV. Okay. Welcome. Welcome, poker players. Thanks a lot to Party Poker TV. Shout out there. We've been uh, doing some shows with them as you guys may remember. Shout out to Party Poker. Poker was actually uh, working out uh, pretty well for me. Some of the fun uh, cash tournaments that we played as well as, uh, as, well as the daily, daily challenges. 
If uh, the chess thing ever goes south, you know, I, I'll always uh, be able to fall back on poker. But I had some beginner's luck, so maybe the problem is that if I go back to it, I won't be a beginner anymore. So maybe I got to take, take what I can get. Still, had a bunch of fun playing uh, poker over the last year. Got into it a lot more than I've ever, ever done before. So welcome. You guys are uh, checking in. I'm a chess grandmaster from Canada and my rating is 1500 and I am an alcoholic. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, we actually got it. We got a higher rated opponent, which means, which means we are gonna hit 1500 on the dot right now. If we can secure this game. 1500 on the dot. This is an all important one right now. Okay, question, where is your bishop going? Let's ask the important question. Okay, bishop there, but maybe I can get the move uh, e5 in. And I think this is somewhat of an achievement for me, you know. C6, something like this. Okay, so I wonder what he's gonna do against my next move. Takes and knight g4. Because if queen g7, maybe I go queen f6 and you don't get mated. Honestly, I think you guys probably wanna see me castle. So I'm, I think I'm in a castle, but what would I do? I would take and go knight g4 and queen here. That's what I would do. But you guys want to see, hey, how do I not get checkmated, dude? Right? Every time I play this opening, I get mated. Well, let me show you why that doesn't happen. You castle, then they hang their bishop, and you win the game. Very easy. So, you guys have nothing to worry about. Ever. For the rest of your lives. You'll be fine. This could be you. You could be enjoying this great position. Oh, yeah. <laughs> actually, it's still in the frame there, Chief. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, why don't you just hold it up uh, just right there and it'll be great. Yeah, just hold that one right up there. There we go. Oh, no worries. Uh, yep, yeah, we're good. We might need uh, Eric to just uh, stand right in front of it there for a sec. Might need you to just uh, hold that pose for us. Yeah, don't worry. We're back. Just had to do the old off on technique. All right. This isn't really a threat, so we don't have to move that. He's got to move two pieces before this is even a threat. However, wondering how to proceed here. Here might be a good move. I should appear a knight there. Yeah, you know, I trade some pieces, but I'm not too impressed by that. I'm not too impressed. I think I'm gonna move this guy. At the end of the day, we want to reroute it. Make some real threats here. Yeah, bishop g4 is. It doesn't impress me too much. I'm gonna reroute. Bring my bishop to g4 uh, like that, and then hopefully target this pawn. Sleep matter type? I think you did. Whoa. Whoa, dude. Dude. That's a big time move from the guy. Let's continue our plan. Something tells me at some point in this game this might still happen. Okay, so this pawn is you know, hanging, let's say. Bishop g4, trading some pieces. This also looks good. Be nice to get uh, some pieces off the board, so we're gonna do that, followed by the invasion, knight d4. Oh, 
Oh, is he allowing more trades? No. It's my lucky day, dude. All these trades are giving me exactly what I want. Let's even trade this one off. Now I'm the only guy with a minor piece uh, left on the board. Sweet. There is not Orbis, but we have an affiliate link for chess.com. That's where we got one. F5, D5. I mean, all, it looks like all roads uh, lead to Rome here. He's gonna go H4, H5 and take, but that's about it, you know? He needs to do h4, he needs to do h5, he needs to take, then he needs to play queen h3, and then he'll have one threat, single threat. <laughs> That's about it. Just one. Let's go. C6. The thing is, you just know in these positions that the maximum that can happen is something to the h file, but like, I mean, he's so thirsty for it, then knight f2 just, just happens. Move like this, well, I can even play queen takes g5, for example. Knight takes g5. But I'm the one that actually benefits from this h-file stuff, not white. Even though it looks scary, it looks like he's the one doing stuff. It actually helps me. Everything's hanging here. Queen's hanging as well. And, for example, something like... Queen takes f4, would immediately trade the queens, but I don't even need to do that. Rook takes f4, and we'll even get a checkmate in here. We'll take it. That's 1500. Smooth. 1500. It looks good. It looks solid. On the dot, I know. We've actually got on the dot ratings a few times so far. Just luck. Fifteen hundred is an important rating, but I said we'd be going for sixteen hundred today. The extended version. Usually I do about hundred points at a time, but the vibes seem uh, good today. The people seem ready to learn. But we did just hit fifteen hundred which means I'm gonna to go to the bathroom and come right back, which means I'm gonna put on our high octane interlude music. Let's pick a good song here. Let's pick a good song. Mm. Ooh, there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of good options. We need, to, we need an energy rising song, you know? techno i'll be right back you guys can jam out we'll be back with more of the speed run though a couple minutes gotta get another drink and uh gotta make sure to drain the main vein let's pump it
Friends. Hello, 1500s. Just had to return with one of the greatest inventions of all time. You know, Gatorade has like 150 calories. Gatorade Zero tastes better, has five calories. I haven't bought actual Gatorade in a very, very long time. Gatorade Zero, my bros, I'm telling you. It's a life hack. All right, we said we're going for 1600. We're at 1500 right now. Looking to go up, all the way up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Zero stuff, this must be like an, an age thing, but Coke Zero, like anything Zero is just preferred. Gatorade Zero, Powerade Zero, Coke Zero. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. And it tastes the same or better. As you get older, you'll uh, you'll start being more conscious of that. Uh, Renzo, thanks for the three months. Black and Blue 602. That's a very, very satisfying name to say. Thanks for the $10. Happiest Bear Bear. Thank you for the nine months. McDermott, 25 months using the Prime as well as Malami Sette. Thank you very much, Malami. Is that, um, is that uh, Italian? Uh, Aeon Robin as well for the 25 months. So we got a few 25 month resubs, very important. You know, you get your uh, you get your two years, and then you make the commitment for year three, 25 months, an important one. Silver Turtle, tier three, 19 months. Welcome back to Silver Turtle, and thank you for the gift. Just have a little crumb, a little crumb. That definitely sounds like it should be a, a rapper's name, right? A little crumb. Doesn't little crumb sound like he, you know, died? in a shootout at 27 with a you know, cup of lean. Nardos, I'm doing great. I'm excited to uh, clock up some more wins or hopefully some non-losses. So here we go. We're gonna get back into it. It closed out with a decent game. Let me bring back our uh, playlist here. Here we go. E4. You would go to a fast food chain called Lil Crumb. Honestly, uh, it's not a bad, uh, not a bad idea. Eh? Oh, are we playing someone from Albania here? Let's go G3. Trying to get this. Oh, he's uh, wise to it. He's wise to it. Well, guys, we're getting the position we want here. <laughs> G5. Ain't it the case? We see G5 a lot, don't we? Like, in general, it's a it's a pretty standard move, I would say. So, how are we gonna handle this one? Um, H6, G5, so G4, I think we, you know, if we take like this, then that's kind of what our opponent wants. What we want is we wanna play Knight H4. Like if I could anchor my Knight on the H4 square, then I would be pretty satisfied. 
The other thing they teach you, of course, is that if you see someone attacking on the side of the board, that you react in the middle. It's not the easiest to react in the middle at the moment. You know, D4 is impossible. So C3, D4, I would definitely uh, advocate. But um, in terms of moves over here, no, none of those look good. So C3, D4, and maybe even push these pawns because it looks like he's castling this way, right? C3 is a very flexible move, especially when this move pretty much tells me, yeah, his king is going over here. Butner says, I love that you guys don't blast us with ads. Butner, I have just been forgetting to do it this whole time. I'm gonna run an ad right now. There you go. Okay, let's go an HG1. Yeah, thanks for the reminder, bud. This is the structure I want. I don't want, you know, to have to take at some point. So my knight here is probably not, um, you know, the best place piece. But if I start using this H file, I think things could uh, really turn around for me here. This is the exact same thing as I did in the last game, if you remember. I was saying, oftentimes, you can start using the uh, the H file just as much as uh, as your opponents do. So I'm gonna bring the rook over there, even get him with knight f3 in. See if we can start using that as well. Also, isn't he allowing some uh, maybe some queen trades here, some favorable stuff? I'm looking at this move, and I'm also looking at just captures. Start by doing this. No, he doesn't. I know he doesn't want to trade uh, queens, that's for sure. Uh, well, I'm surprised to see that. I'm happy. Hey, if he's happy doing it and I'm happy seeing it, then perfect, right? Some relationships exist like that in real life and there's, there's nothing wrong with that, right? If you're happy doing something, and I'm happy watching it, let's just say there's a relationship for that. Okay, knight g5. Time for knight g5. Bishop d2, maybe get this rook over. Knight f7, no, you can't be blundering that one. That's, I didn't deserve this tactic. This was, uh, this was out of nowhere. I didn't deserve for things to work out that well. Take. More trades. More trades. This was a little uh, unfortunate for Black. He played a pretty uh, aggressive game, but I don't think he should have traded queens the way he did. I just want to trade pieces. Speaking of trading. You know, for sure, if we play this, he takes this pawn, right? He must. He's born to blunder. Rookie one is the good move. But the, oh no, no, if he's playing that, he knows what he's doing. No, no, this guy's a serious player. That was a that was a b6. He wants to play c5, so he can take this bishop or this pawn rather. Impressive. Okay, let's uh, push our pawns up here. C6 loses the bishop. You see, he blunders, but he sees the blunder. You know, we've we've seen a few of those, a few examples of that today. Blunders, but sees the blunder. And then blunders again. <laughs> Wait, what? What the heck is going on here? He blundered, but then he saw he blundered, but then he forgot he saw he blundered, so he blundered. 
I don't know if that I should be impressed by that or disturbed. <laughs> okay, let's go here and uh, try to get a checkmate. You know? Check. Right, so we've got the king cut off this way. Now we need to bring down here and down here. Oh, he sees what I'm up to. That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I'm up to something too, bud. <laughs> he shall be checkmated. I will find a way. Check. <laughs> Does he know that's Jack? Oh, it does. Uh, let's go here. This is uh, very entertaining. I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, get this mate, though. Oh. Rook here? I'm really married to this idea. <laughs> we got the mate. We got the mate. Okay, we'll take that. We'll take that. I was very surprised he decided to go uh, down the board, but I thought he would go up the board. Still, we would find a way to get that to rook mate. We were committed to it worked in the end. Exactly. I'll we'll take it. Doesn't matter how you got there. It's about how you finished. That was, yeah, that was very odd. He blundered, but then he, he definitely saw the, the trick with rookie six. Or maybe he just mouse slipped. I could just be reading into it too much. Now we are 1500. We, there's higher expectations, you know? The players are definitely getting better. You can feel that there was a. We haven't met, you know, very very stiff competition, but it's been impressive so far. Some players, of course, put together some unreal games. Let's see. What do the black pieces bring in the fifteen hundred category? Remember, I talked about what happens when people just send all their pawns at you. My instinct is to immediately challenge the center like take that take that stuff see if you can't make some threats okay so if i go here he's definitely gonna be taking my question is what if i go here how's he gonna handle that one he almost has to go well, he almost has to play bishop takes c6 anyway, which is not a good sign. So if he takes, I'll be happy to take back just with my pawn and maybe put my bishop on that square. So he can't even castle. I feel like that, that should be generally a bit frustrating for him, but I could be wrong. Okay, so you can't castle. Aren't you bothered there, bud? Doesn't this bother you, lad? I feel like he's unfazed. This is just uh, par for the course for him. Even queen c4 is an idea. Which one do we want to do? Remember, this knight just develops like h6 to f5. And it's actually a pretty nice square, so. Let's go here, followed by this. <laughs> okay, and this move doesn't look overly threatening. Here, just drop back. Here, I'm not sure there are any threats actually with the knight. Let's just keep bringing my pieces in.
queen d5. I mean, both squares look uh, look pretty nice to be honest. I'm gonna go here because it attacks a pawn. No, we don't want to play e6 here. It makes a ton of weaknesses on the dark squares, which I'm not too interested in. And it's also just not necessary. I don't need any pieces developing here. So what what does the move e6 do? Right. It's much better if to get castle as quickly as possible. I'd rather play something like f6. That's what I'd like to do. Okay, that's a free pawn though. That's a free pawn, and we take those. This guy, by the way, keeping the, the king in the middle, he might not be admitting it, but I promise you that it is disturbing him. <laughs> He's not ready to admit it yet, but it's very bothersome. So I could take here, but bishop there, there would be like, let's just say a bunch of trades, because I would have to play queen takes e2. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to give him a check. And if he plays here, I'm going to go back to the center and hit his rook. And if he castles, he's going to drop the knight. So now he has to move the rook. So now his king is definitely not castling. And I know he's very upset about that. Right, everything's all tied up here. This move looks good. Rook d8. I know castling is important, but... I like this move. Make it so that he can't move the bishop, he can't move the knight. You know, I'm, I'm trying to tie him up in a knot here. Oh, that's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. So, I know there's levels to this stuff, but pay attention. This happens a lot. People just chuck their pawns down your throat and let's say you're a guy who plays King's Indian, you can no longer put your knight on F6. Start to panic a little bit. Might handle this poorly. Might play D5, E6, all these moves that don't belong in the position. Just, first of all, we'll wipe as many pawns off the board as you can, and then just treat that as a weakness. Focus on it. Bishop be here, Queen D5 is just, I mean, it's just tactics at this point. White has chucked their F, C pawn, E, D pawn up the board in, well, in favor of playing maybe knight F3 and castles. Like, there's a lot of ways white could be fully developed here, but instead they've played like five or six pawn moves. You have to try to punish those. Yeah, over in Toronto now, buddy. Right? And then once you do that, you just treat this as the weakness. Knight here, knight here. If knight f3, then bishop g4, pin the knight. Your bishop can't attack that pawn, but it can attack the knight, which defends that pawn. With knight coming here, bishop taking the knight, this guy castling, it seems like uh, black has too much going on. But so far, people who have just uh, thrown the pawns down the board have not usually had a good time. Okay, so we've seen this uh, opening before. I think previously I tried knight g4, but also very normal, bishop g4. I've talked about this idea of just giving the bishop up, playing knight c6, and going after the center here. We move e5, play on the dark squares. Try that out. Because a lot of the time when you play e5, you really throw your opponent off. Number one, if they take you, they see knight takes, they lose their bishop, you know, that doesn't necessarily compute as something they want to do. So a lot of times people will play this move against you. And the move d5 is uh, not necessarily a move that you want to play as white, I'll say. So I'm going to start like this. Again, if I get the dark square bishop, I'd be pretty happy in general. Move this bishop or this knight rather, so we can actually use some squares. Knight here, knight here. Bishop covers the pawn. So I know it's opposite bishops, but us 
playing this opening, King's Indian, as long as you have this and there's no counterpart, you're usually having a pretty good time. Rook d8, we have an open file there, 95, still available. Okay, but he's doing some... He's doing some funny stuff now because he's almost losing that bishop immediately. He's not dropping it right away, but after queen here, you know, what about rook here? All of a sudden, the uh, pieces start to coordinate pretty well. If I play a5, it can almost even uh, get rook b4 in there. You would have to play some pretty accurate moves in order to stay in the game. I'm thinking a5 is a uh, pretty good move here, threatening rook b4 to, uh, to fork those guys. And... Otherwise, I'm playing rook takes b2 as an idea. But my opponent still has, you know, knight takes d4, for example. Not clear. c5 as well. Threatens the same thing, right? Threatens rook b4. But the reason I don't like c5 is I don't like giving that bishop an available square. So, I prefer to do something like this and then go rook b4. It's not the easiest to get out of. It's definitely got some moves, but this one doesn't look too impressive. And I was thinking that this didn't look too impressive either. It's playable, but boy, that don't look right. And it don't look right because the queen sits on a3. That can't be good. Just can't be good. Well, let me tell you, something's wrong with this picture. Something. We play queen here. The e pawn will hang in, in those lines as well, so. That's always gonna be nice. C5 still, like, always gonna be a decent move. Um. I'd love to trap the queen somehow, but it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. Let's have a look-see here. I'm definitely looking at some... I'm trying to set up something real real nasty for the guy. He's got me really thinking about you know, how can I trap the queen? <laughs> That's all I'm interested in. Rookie 8, 87, these are all these are all good moves. I like them. I like them. You guys are not wrong, trust me. But it just doesn't lead to that pretty queen trap that we all want. So we'll give it our best try. But yeah, none, none of these things are really like fully trap the, the queen, unfortunately. So, wow. It's quite possible if you played the worst move Ever. <laughs> like, he gave no thought. My guy! I just spent like three minutes on this move. Three minutes! And you spent three seconds playing the losing move. Like, at least give me some credit. I spent three minutes. I came up with a banger move. You play the worst move against it. 
If someone spends three minutes on a move, the bare minimum respect you should be able to show them is like, okay, I'll spend 30 seconds on the reply, you know? Like, there's gotta be some level of... It's just too much. It's too much. Bring the knife back. Bring the knife back. H5. Now that move was made pretty quickly. But there's a there's an issue with the lack of respect from my opponent. H5 and just no respect. He just takes it immediately. Ugh, he must have blundered. Ugh. Ugh. Please don't do it. Please don't do it. Crispy. You're not gonna find it. Good man. Crispy. There's a there's a respect issue between us, Crispy. Is he gonna hang his rook? Crispy, don't do it. Crispy. Don't do it. Don't do it, Crispy. Tread carefully, bud. No! Crispy! You just you have two and a half minutes. Just Bare minimum respect for my moves, please. I need something from you here, Crispy. Something so that I know you care, you know? Bishop to e5, and let's deliver that me. Check. Check. That's check. Did you know that? That's check. I checked you, sir. I answered your check with a check. Check. That's the unexpected one, you know? Check, check. They never see that one coming. But really, I mean, it has to be said. If, if your opponent spends from three minutes down to one minute, you know, <laughs> come on, at least spend more than four seconds on them, just at least. It's a good piece of advice if your opponent spends a long time on something. Even if it doesn't look like a good move and you feel like you have the refutation ready, just spend a little extra time on it. You've got the time to spare. May as well. Now we're 15, you know, we're going solid in the 1500s here. This game was, uh, you know, pretty good example. Nothing special, but this is one of my, I think it's the easiest plan to execute. You're playing the King's Indian Black, someone goes for one of the most basic setups in chess. Here it is, you're staring at it. He's got all pieces on decent squares, and he's about to castle. Now from your perspective, you give away your light squared bishop, which does not ever control the dark square, for a knight, which controls two in the center, and his queen is also pulled away, because it's gonna recapture. And then you go e5, and you get a position where you know, oftentimes they'll be tempted to give away their dark squared bishop. And this guy's always better than that guy, no matter what, no matter what. And in the end, this bishop ended up being the, the guy who delivered the crucial checkmate. So, dark squared bishop will rule the position if you just... It's a pretty simple plan, you just give away the bishop for knight and then play in the dark squares. Tends to work well. Let's go d3. Okay, we know our plan here. Similar stuff. With d5, again, we have knight d2, so that we're not ever trading. Don't want to trade those queens. Okay, knight d2, h3. Wow, that is a serious move there. Bishop a6, okay. Hey, don't mind me, I'm just doing my damn thing over here. Don't mind me, just going about my business. Okay, 
does eventually play d5, which I understand. I think it might be a little late. I'll bring my knight in. Oh my goodness. You see what he just did? He's got two bishops that could have benefited from opening the position. He just pushed in the center and then he played d4. That move is just screaming out of place. There is no way that the move d4 is acceptable in a position like this. Let's thrust forward with f4. Um, I'm not even upset to see that move. I think I would, I would actually probably want to see that move. So I might even uh, let my opponent play it, try to encourage it. Maybe just a nothing move, like a3. You know, it's nice to take care of that knight square in case we ever play queen e1. And hey, got a great looking bishop here. Got a great looking b. Yeah, b b4 looks well. I say I made a nothing move, but I actually made the best possible move in the position because b4, b5 might win some material, but <laughs> it doesn't mean it wasn't the right instinct. Anyway, e5 and again, when you're playing positions where you have your Fianchetto Bishop and they don't have theirs, you've seen game after game, it always goes well. I think it's time to take some stuff start with that. Material is material is material. Make another threat. Assume he'll just bring that back into civilization. And no, it's not crazy to start pushing these pawns. If my opponent wasn't hanging material the way that they did, then I probably would have done a plan like that, honestly. Knight c4, hit the bishop, open, uh, open my bishop up. Again, notice how there's no big rush to uh, to develop this guy on c1. Should be this move. But he helped me by letting my bishop get to a3 because now on queen d5, I should be able to just play knight e5 and then rook e1 and take this knight. Whereas with the bishop still here, queen d5 would be fine because takes, takes, knight e5, rook e5, he doesn't lose any material. Now he actually should be losing material. Whoa! Knight takes f5. That is a serious move. I do. A lot of ways to uh, continue this one. I guess this is technically the best. And then take this. Powerful, yeah. Rook f8 is powerful. I think we just uh, basically leave this guy. Forget about him. And go for me. This one, we might have to go for the long con. I don't see that knight over there doing anything, so maybe it's possible. I think I think we're going for the long con here. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. Six, I gotta recapture. I have a lot of work to do, put it that way. A lot of work to do. Is it worth guarding this? I think it is. I really don't want the knight ending up there. Although, to be honest, if he trades the knight, then makes my job pretty easy as well.
Knight here, knight here, and rook f8. Now, he can try this and give the knight away, but I am still up an entire point. It's tough to see how that plan ends up working. Okay, that makes my job just a little bit easier. Just a wee bit. Check. What's the, uh, what's the prescribed uh, win here? This one. Really, I want the knight there, but my knight is on the possibly the worst square on the whole board to actually get there, so I don't think we're gonna make it. Now, you might think I'm threatening that checkmate, but I'm actually threatening that checkmate. GG. What happened here? Oh uh, yeah, well his, his opening wasn't that great. His d4 move was really bad. You notice he actually moved his uh, d-pawn one, two, three times. And it also ended up on the worst of those three squares. So that's not a good sign. For us, the plan was pretty simple. We got our setup. We did 9h4, 9h5, we did f4. And by the time we did that, we were basically winning or our opponent would have to give away the light square bishop, which is just fantastic for white. The other way to play this position would be to take and play like g4 or something. g4, knight f3, get the bishop out, and kind of launch the attack that way, which would also be very good. All right. Asios, thanks for the, uh, the host, buddy. Appreciate that. A host all the way from Norway. Lolly, thanks for gifts up to Mark. Bra size, eight months, tier three. Ashgold, gift and a sub. And Ixis, thanks for the three months. Thanks, Ixis. Right, burp <laughs> You were correct. We are still undefeated. We had a very, very entertaining draw earlier today to start things off, but since then we've remained in control. Well, Hugh, it kind of depends on what I get given, right? So I'm always looking to do that plan, but it's not not always easy to achieve. Okay, let's make sure to play this so that we do not trade the queens. No queen trade for you, dude. Remember, I want to play queen here, but certainly don't want the knight jumping in. So c3 first and then queen e1. h2, normal move, knight h4, all moves I want to get in. So everything I've done so far has been pretty by the book, I would say. Totally by the book. All right, I'm looking to get rid of his light square bishop. And then once we do that, usually start pushing on the other side of the board a little bit. Start to loosen up his uh, loosen up his position. Let's start with b4. Hit this guy. The reason I'm not really going a4 is because he's also got bishop back to d6, so it doesn't even really 
threaten to win anything, honestly. Um, knight c4 and a4 both look like fantastic moves. b5 is kind of a uh, mini threat here. b5, bishop a3. But okay, if you play something like this, he's inadvertently stopping it. Even if he didn't mean to. Yeah, it should be a5. This is uh, just, just not enough, I think. a5. The right idea and I have a few ways to play first one which I think I'm about to do um, involves just getting the knight to d5 pretty strong but this bishop still hasn't moved so that's the first way bishop e3 knight takes and knight d5 the other way to play involves basically keeping the two bishops and keeping everything and just playing super slow like rook a2 rook d2 and trading things slowly I like this more because it Keeps the pace a little bit. And take with the knight and get the knight there. So I'm gonna get a lot of space here. It's gonna open up my bishop as well. Yeah, let's uh, keep everything going. Right, look, my queen defending before there. Even if he takes, I mean, I'm coming in with the bishop, so it also looks pretty, pretty solid for me there. Let's go. What do you want? What do you want? Let's go. I wonder, do we want to play rook there? Do we want any trades? I'm thinking queen e3 looks like a pretty sweet inclusion. Let's go. Throw this one in. The knight is lacking squares, and knight there also. Seem to be lacking pawns. Let's go. Let's go. But yeah, it seems like stuff is falling here. I think the simplest is probably to just take this. Queen to e1 guards the pawn as well. And we also have bishop d5, which is going to be a check. Let's go. What do you want? Let's go. Check. Doesn't have a ton of squares. Let's, go. Let's, go. Let's bother the queen a little bit. Really, something like this is go. good enough, but start with this. Let's go. Rook d1. Sort of threatening to play knight d4, but I don't think he's going to be able to survive on the king side here. Like this is pretty lethal. Yeah, I've got a pawn hanging, but queen takes uh, g6 is going to be lights out. The king is also being forced this way. If you get a queen to the h file, queen h8 is also going to be made. We have pressure on the king side and pressure on the queen side because we're about to make a pass bomb. It looks tough to meet, that's for sure. Yeah, so queen h4 here, rook takes d5, queen h8, and then take back is decent. Queen takes g6 is just looks simple and good to me and then there's even like rook takes d4 to consider but yeah this this move looks simple and good it's checkmate so you can't just go grab that rook takes d5 yeah it does it does allow his queen to move but 
certainly doesn't look like a good position. Is it time to, is it time to get things moving over here? I think it might be. D5? Five might be might be even better. Queen H seven. Like the position is so good, I'm really considering playing a move that is not taking the knight. <laughs> that's how that's how strong the position looks. Queen H seven looks like uh, could potentially pose some problems as well. What do you want? Takes in Queen H seven. Should be enough. Not queen g6 because then queen back, but yeah, this should do it. Six again, but I think probably uh, you just live by the old adage always repeat. Okay, it looks winning now. Now that I see it a second time, it looks winning. Always repeat, that's what they teach you. You have a chance to repeat in chess, you always do. Just to get a good idea, a good feel for the position, gotta repeat. That'll let you know what, what your opponent's playing for. You know, if they repeat, they're happy to repeat, etc. Repeat and rinse. That's exactly what happened. Kill him in Jaro. Exactly. Our next one looks like it's gonna be for 1550. This one we actually got to see a quick D5, which we haven't seen in a while, but I think White's moves remain very similar. Right, the, eventually you gotta start pushing some pawns over here, but knight c4, like I've had games that have looked almost exactly like this. And at this point, yeah, things start to devolve a little bit into more middle game stuff, but pretty much up till here, this is all standard stuff. Standard ideas for this opening. King's Indian attack. Hello to a doubly. Well, let's get another game since you're joining us here. And with black, it's a little bit less a little bit less effective for not playing a full King's Indian, but what the heck is that? Interesting. Oh. I think I'll try to do my same idea though. Of going there and going like knight here, e5, etc. So let's do the same plan and see if it works. I think I'm gonna go knight h5 first. Because this guy's hanging, and I want him to play c3, and then I wanna play e5. Plus, this knight is exactly where it needs to be for the next plan, which is knight f4. So I could have played uh, e5 first there, but I like this one better. Threatening the d-pawn, you can't move it because of that. This loses a pawn. C3 looks like the only move. Queen E3, very happy to see it. Time for E5. It's called the King's Indian defense with black, King's Indian attack with white. Let's see if we can come up with enough BS to make this work. Go tricks. Okay, he didn't quite play the move he should have. It's okay. Um, looks like knight here is gonna be the play. Knight here, queen g5. Eh, sort of. Sort of. It's a it's a move that sort of works. Okay, well he did he did play it now.
Just gotta play queen g5. Just must happen. Bye. Okay. Well, if I look for better uh, there, I'm worried I might find it, so. <laughs> I gotta play that one quickly. Put it in the win column. There you go, A-Doubly. Nice little uh, win for you, buddy. That was pretty quick, yeah. I mean, I was waiting for the move uh, C3 from him a little bit earlier, but in general, I think this plan is like highly effective overall. Highly effective overall. Bishop G4, take the knight, playing the dark squares, tends to work. Ah, so we might get this opening for the first time since the beginning of the stream, which is scary for me because at the beginning of the stream, we faced a real tough cookie. A doubly, thanks for five gifted subs. Cheers, dude. I think uh, it might be time for E5. So this is pretty much the same style as what I was saying earlier. E5, let's go Queen E2. But the people that are playing these uh, these lines, like they're definitely they're definitely heavy hitters. Put it that way. Knight here. This is the uh, typical plan of uh, you know knight h2, knight g4, bishop f4. This is what I was uh, excited to talk about. Let's get the bishop out first. Yeah, so I can take, but I think I'd actually rather play this. And yeah, if you want to take me, you can. But I'm going to threaten your pawn here. Here, I think we'll go uh, C3. Take that. Always bring the rook to D1. We've got pressure on this pawn. He's barely defending it. Knights and bishops. Very solid, solid game so far. H5 is not usually the move you want to play. Let's go check. Well, these are these are quick wins. Uh, <laughs> it's not my fault, dude. They're blundering. They're blundering checkmate and one. They're blundering their queen, man. What am I supposed to do? I can't help it. So this is a setup here, and it, Black can set it up any way he wants. But you get you'll get it against the French and against people who play the Khan or the Taimanov. And they won't always play this, they'll sometimes play knight f6, bishop e7. But the point for white is that you push forward with e5, you support it with your queen, knight, and rook. And they usually can't attack it more than three times. And then you play h4, you reroute your knight to the g4 square, play bishop f4, everybody supports the e-pawn. And then you either play h5 or some sack against the king. And it's a really easy way to play for white. You can just uh, crank those moves out pretty effortlessly. Don't really have to think about what black is doing. And once you get bishop f4, it's like, yeah, they can never go f6. You're always threatening to hit the queen. You're going to play queen d2 and hit that pawn. Knight g4 to do the same. And you're all over these uh, dark squares on the king's side. And then once you do that all successfully, then they will hang their queen every time. Every single time. Enjoy.
Coach, you read my mind, man. I, I barely got it ahead of you, but I appreciate the reminder. Okay, are we gonna get the same thing? Is he an E6 guy? No, okay. He's a D6 guy. He's an E6 and a D6 guy, all right. Hey, uh, it's just a guy going both ways. King's Indian vibes, H3. H4, F4. C3 is also going to be a, an important move for me. I've talked about how C3 restricts that knight so well from C6, which covers all those important squares. Don't know what that is, but it's not going to stop me from playing F4. If G5 here, let's move the knight back. G5 is not a good move for black. Knight to h5. Interesting. I think I'm going to move the other knight in. Something we've done before. We want to play g4. This knight guards h4. I think it's time for c3. And our next move is definitely g4. <laughs> we want to play this move. See what he does, but yeah, that's that's what we got on tap. F5, pretty impressive move. Definitely a strong one. It's just gonna slow things down for me a tad. For example, here takes takes knight takes f4. So what that means is I'll finally actually develop this bishop, and I think I'll play queen d2 to guard that pawn, and then I want to play g4. J Nooms 96, 19 months. Thanks for the resub. You have COVID. Well, congratulations, dude. It's actually pretty annoying, I feel like, if you just haven't got COVID before. You're always concerned about getting it. Now you've got it. Strong immune system, and uh, then likelihood of you getting it again, it goes way down. So congrats to J Nooms. Yeah, welcome to the club, man. We all have COVID here in chat. Knight to F6, I'm really looking at E5 here. E5 is looking uh, very snacky. This opens up my bishop. On g2. Yes, he can play knight d5, but remember, there's no way these pawns do not exchange for one another, right? It's like, it's forced. It's going to happen. You want to go to f2 or d2? I'm actually not sure. I think I'm going to choose. Very close call. I'm going to choose f2, actually. The point is I want to take with my knight, not my pawn, and I'd like to maintain a piece on the e5 square, if I can. So moves like rook e1, queen e2, other rook to d1, these are the moves I'm thinking of next. Yeah, bishop g1 is not crazy by the way. I only kept it here because I thought maybe it could be useful there, but bishop g1 is not, a, not as crazy as you might think. Again, this can happen pretty much any time. We'll go here. Maybe we can bait him into playing bishop b5. Ok, 
Okay, I think I'm gonna stay on track here. Rook d1, just getting the pieces in. If he wants to take me, that's great. I'm ready to take back. Otherwise, I'm happy to wait and just develop the rest of my pieces. Remember, he wants me to take him so that this bishop gets helped out. I think rookie one. C4, though, also making a lot of sense now because I think he just took his, uh, his last square away from his piece. So C4, knight B4, and A3. Right, and then the knight, ironically, does not have any squares, so he might have to give up his light squared bishop, which would be pretty bad. That'd be a pretty bad sign. Yeah, knight, knight here is great. Now we get to do what we all want to do against knights. You know, the move B3. B3 is the ultimate move that just kills a knight on B6. The same way G3 kills a knight on G6. Takes away all the important squares that it wants to uh, to move forward into. So let's make sure we take this because I think d5 is a uh, thread in there. And then we're ready to keep things under control with b3. Okay. Wonder if this is a threat. Is that move a threat? Looks annoying enough. Like almost annoying enough that I want to deal with. Almost. Because e5 frees things up for him. Not really in a way I want to allow. So I think we're gonna switch it up and I'm gonna go for knight g5. So yes, offering a trade of these guys. The opponent still has weak pawns here. I, of course I have an idea of knight takes e6, not even sure if it's a threat. Bishop's also going to get hit by a move like knight to e4. Tough to play because if he doesn't get this move in successfully, b3 is going to happen and he's just going to be in for a pretty terrible I think this is time for this move. Takes, takes. Bishop has to be dealt with. B3, and also this pawn is uh, gonna be hanging as well. Now, taking this pawn is definitely not as important as protecting my pawn, because his knight has not a single square to move to. I'd rather make him go play defense defending that pawn. And as expected, he's not going to, which means that's mine to take. E6 is hanging. It's one of the first games I feel like I've been up on time. It's because it's been a pretty challenging position for my opponent to play. Take. I'm gonna end up winning multiple uh, pieces if he takes that. Pretty impressive, he did not capture it. The bishop paid off in the end, it stopped knight h4 check. 
Not that it really matters. Not that it really matters at the very end. But it, it really was structurally a very one-sided game after e5. But you gotta give it to uh, our opponent here. Like, really a game full of uh, pretty much no blunders, I would say, for the most part. If he didn't play f5, we would have had a much more fun game with g4 and f5 ourselves, g5, etc. So we could have ended up launching a huge attack in this game, but f5 by him was just a, a strong move. But we still did all the right things. Like, here we could have considered, maybe could have considered this, but I still think knight here was correct. And this all seemed right. Okay, but it was a solid, solid game by him. If you look at white's setup, I mean, when black does something that really doesn't challenge your setup at all, like basically this half of the board, no, he was, it's almost like he was operating where we weren't. So we were doing our own things, which means we get to set all this up, beautiful. And we get a good game from that. Best tool to memorize the square names. Well, they have these fancy things on the board called coordinates. You could try that. They uh, tend to help most people. That's right, Ralph. Thank you, Ralph Wiggum. Uh, yep pointing out that there is a coordinate trader on uh, chess.com. Good point, Ralph. Calipr Come on, Calipranzi. What are you talking about? Knight takes F4 here. Why are you asking me this question? Do you see there's pawn there? Can it take it? Knight takes f4 question mark? No. Knight takes f4 double question mark. What is the suggestion? What is this move? What what is this idea even about? Because even if it's like, I feel like you can answer your own question, honestly. Knight takes f4? I think you can answer that. I think you're strong enough to explain to the chat, explain to the audience why knight takes f4 is not a good one. So I'm gonna leave that to you. Ooh, the games are getting uh, tougher. We're at 1569 right now. Thanks, JNooms96, 37, 19 months, uh, Nezikos earlier, the brand new sub of the channel, and Invisible Andy80, gifting a sub. Thank you, thank you. H4. Okay, what's the idea with H4? Please enlighten me. Okay, so he's playing h4. He's giving me dark square bishop. I'm waiting for the, yeah, what's the punchline? What's the punchline? Okay. Okay, and now you're trading the queens. So now you don't have any attack and you're removing your castling rights. And now white is better? Is that is that what I'm supposed to believe? That white has an advantage now after all that? <laughs> this seems highly unlikely. Guys, I'll just leave it at that. Highly unlikely. Okay. So now we're handing over free tempo to me. Okay, okay, I'm just keeping track here. So 
So this move right now definitely wins me e5 pawn. Even bishop g4 looks like a like a decent move. Right, because bishop g4 pins the knight, once again threatens to take it. Check is good, everyone knows that. I think I'm going to go here because I'm hoping that we bait him into playing this move. We get to take that pawn. So we don't get to do that, but what we do get to do is win a free pawn here. Yeah, always check it might be mate. That's what they say, right? I think he's uh, taking it to heart. So we won a pawn, we're just gonna bring the bishop back. 87, castle some way. Alex, thanks for 52 months. Alex, 14. Let's bring this here. Still wanna bring that bishop back. Bishop at five at some point will be a, a decent move as well. I'll probably do it right now. Grilled peppers, if that's the, uh, I think if that's the threshold, then nobody's doing well. Hello to grilled peppers. Okay, this looks good just for trading purposes, but it's hard for me to give away that bishop after I talked it up, talked such a big game about it. What's going on here? Such nice bishops. Why thank you? I think we go here. Knight f8? Question mark. Here in knight c5. Yeah, it's funny, Prim. Only the plebs got that one. The subs kind of struck out. That's a threat. We're also stopping 86, so we can take this next turn. Hmm. Knight d3 looks uh, very effective, though. Those squares get checked, and that square gets forked. So I think he kind of has to take me, but if he takes me, his knight is still trapped here. at this point, 83 thing is uh, a little strong to me. Definitely a strong 1500, absolutely. I've had to find some uh, tactics, no doubt here. did almost trick us. That the game was not easy, for sure. I mean, I I think that I just didn't want to give up the bishop and go into the tactics. What would I recommend for everyone to do? Just bishop takes knight and black is very easily winning. Because you're just up a pawn. Very solid structure. But I think this move is fine. It just gets tactical and you have to be ready to show up and play the tactics with them. But it, it's the more effective move. Bishop h7. Right, 1577. Okay, hmm. 1577. We need, uh, and we won't do a rematch. I, uh, he's the first guy almost that's asked for a rematch, but I'm just gonna be joining the pool for this particular challenge. Thanks a little crumb gifting a sub. Alex14 with the 52 munch, munch, months. 
Tiny Koya 13 as well. Thank you for the bits. Oh, we know what's coming. We know it. Yeah, buddy. There it is. Give me that bishop. I'm going to play c3, which is usually the move you want to do after this. And hey, if I see the guy castling that way, you're going to get me excited here with b4, right? I got to get the pawns going myself. How am I going to say no to that? Push him baby, why not? Queen a4, b5. Oh, where's your knight going there, brah? You just took the last available square for that knight. Your own pieces are to blame here. Get this. Looks like I will immediately shut that down with uh, the pawn there. The only reason I could consider not doing that is because here I'm really gonna have some checkmate ideas. So that this doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Well, all I'm seeing is potential mates. The queen comes to c8, so it's not force mate, but it's pretty damn close. Pretty damn close. I wish I could, you know, take here or something to distract the queen, but it's just not possible. And this one, you are gonna get meted, bruh. You can't be doing this. Meeting one, look for better. Hopefully, he doesn't play king a8. <laughs> then I can't look for better. Oh, he just resigns, that's good. Guys, I, was, I wasn't gonna check me then. I was gonna look for better. You would never know because the game didn't didn't end that way, but you just gotta trust me. This is just a uh, honestly pretty smooth game, and I think I've even had a position that looked exactly like this before in this speed run. You get that bishop, immediately go for the c3 move. It helps your queen get out, it helps support b4, it keeps the knight out of d4, and b4, like c3 is a great move to be playing. c3 really brings it all together after you get the light square bishop as well. The legacy continues, that's exciting, Tom. You got uh, family there, they're... Soon your little ones are gonna be running around doing habits as well. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Are we getting two more games for 1600? It looks like because this this is going to be a this is going to be a good one. All right, F4 is played. We get our fianchetto here, no problem. Whoa! All right, he's coming straight for us. Well, this one's gonna be tougher. 1600s in the house, yeah. Whoa! What the hell is that? I'm gonna attack some dark squares here. Knight h5, this should be uh, the typical wheelhouse stuff. Knight takes here, everything's looking like a snack right now. The dark squares just fall apart, don't they? E5 here. C5 also looks like a pretty solid move. I would say both of them are totally acceptable. I'm probably gonna go C5 here because I'm really expecting this. And then I believe following up with B5 is a, it's a very aggressive high energy way to play. You know, we're gonna get queen a5, we're gonna get rook b8, and this bishop from g7 is still gonna coordinate on the b2 square. So this just looks strong. This is 
is the move I wanted to see. Eh, eh, eh. There's, <laughs> there's a B2 pawn in the future, boy. It's a lurk in there. All right, so Queen A5 looks like a, a move here. I mean, I think he just has to play C4 next, but Rook B8 looks just plain and simple. Easy move. A shirt. We're trying to get a quick uh, KO here. Yep, exactly. Using our King's Indian Bishop, coordinating there. If C4, we just have A6, get the boys in there. I don't see a good way to get, <laughs> let's see a good way to not lose a lot here. Queen E2 is also Knight G3. Queen A5 is also a strong idea, but I didn't want to start there because then he would play Bishop C4, cover it, and then if I played Rook B8, he could deal with this threat with C3 maybe, so. Not quite good enough. Yeah, and this one, speaking of not quite good enough. I think we can just hurt him here with bishop takes because if the king tries to run, then he's gonna be handing me that bishop. And with the uh, bishop d4 looking for trades, aka looking for knight f4. Bringing the uh, the homies in. Okay, e5 not only gets the queen off this diagonal, but might get it off the b2 square as well, and it does. Jack. Jack. Jack me. Yay. Effortless, yes. Oh, miss queen B or miss the queen with rook B2. So we have some uh, thirsty individuals here, huh? So, in this position, you guys wanted to play rook b2, right? A lot of you. So this is, I'm just wondering, we're making sure to get all the bands lined up. So, ng, pubg, um, heavenly, uh, suti, boom, boom, yeah, you, um, that's a lot of people, noise dota, Yep, that's a lot of bands we got uh, going on there. A lot, that's a lot. And those are just the guys who uh, started the riots, who incited the discussion. RDN as a subscriber, another uh, guy uh, about to uh, get axed. So Rook B2 from the chat. Uh, a strong, sturdy move, which uh, loses the game on the spot and ensures that uh, Black doesn't have any other threats. Rook to b2. But it was there was some conviction in the chat as well. Some real serious conviction. Oh, outrageous. I miss Rook b2. <laughs> there was some disdain. What do those guys have to say for themselves now? I notice they're very quiet. They're trying not to chat. The people I called out, they're trying not to chat because they know if they chat, then I'll have their username so I can ban them. A lot of quiet bras right now, yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, where, where are you guys at? Where's my Rook B2 gang now? Well, we can safely say that this is a great warning shot. You know, for anyone else, if you're gonna call it out, better be correct. Because you'll get a lot of brownie points. If you call out a move that is correct, that I missed, you'll get brownie points as well. Like, trust me, you'll get in the good books around here. And they're not bad books to be in. However, However, if you're wrong about it, you're, you're, you might not be in any books at all. You're, <laughs> there might be permanently zero record of you just erased from the system. You might not be in any books at all. So either be good or be banned. You know, the great thing about chess is it's really easy to explain right and wrong it's it's very easy i've seen a lot of people are, are, are rather sensitive to like you know back seating some streamers very sensitive you've probably seen like you know no back seating or you're banned and i just think that's insane you know like you know, you're a streamer you know thick skin relax however if you're back seating and you're wrong well then yeah get the hell out of here <laughs> If you can't even backseat properly, well then you're adding nothing. So at least if you're gonna backseat, please be correct. At least have some redeeming qualities with your comments here. All I'm seeing are absolutely nothing being offered from the comments. Rook B2, what, come on, come on. Backseat or backdoor? We do a lot of backdooring here, that's for sure. And we might be one win away from 1600. We might be one win away from 1600. Let's see if we can get it right now. Yep. We're playing possibly the highest rated player we've played so far. We played a few 1600s, but. go so we're playing a guy who's basically setting up the old hippo but i'm not gonna let it phase me i'm just gonna set up my exact opening the way i usually do whoa just hang on a sec there bro hemoth that does not look right at all now, why isn't that correct? Why? Well, I'm assuming you guys see what I see. You guys see the, guys? See the win? It'd be great if you guys could uh, just let me know the win. Back seating, right? Type it out, let's see the, let's uh, why don't you type out your moves, guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't you uh, participate in the stream? Why don't you uh, type out your moves, guys? Yeah, yeah, no, just type them out. Here in public. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of people are uh, scared to make some suggestions now. Uh-huh, uh-huh. No, that's fine, that's fine. We'll still find a way to make it work. Now, what we're gonna go for here is something that I would call suspicious, but it will work. The best kind of moves. Suspicious, but it'll work. It's suspicious, but it'll work. It'll, it'll just, it'll just work. suspicious one but don't worry it'll work the 
it hasn't worked yet, right? Don't get too hyped because remember, we lost the piece to get this as well. So we haven't done anything yet. <laughs> we haven't done anything good yet. Thinking maybe uh, you know, B3, Bishop A3 kind of ideas, but uh, that gives, uh, gives our opponents some good chances as well. Maybe it's time to just move this knight, you know, something like knight here, knight c4. If b3, bishop a3, I don't think we're, uh, we're not really prosecuting the advantage that well. Take knight, f takes e5. Yeah, but the knight just takes back. Doesn't seem that good. Bishop takes looks a little suspicious. I'm gonna take with the pawn. Okay, take control of a few squares there. <laughs> that move is looking great now, but it's, it's hard to get, it's hard to get. I think I'm gonna play D4. Really take uh, the sting out of that. Oh, Luis F. Oliveira and Adrian28. Let's remember those names, guys. They said in this position, I was threatening. Bishop takes D7, King takes D7, Queen takes G6, oh my God, Queen takes G6, 95, losing the game on the spot. Make sure we remember those guys. Unbelievable suggestion by two upstanding chess bra citizens. Oh, this guy, he's setting something up, hey? And you gotta be careful. When you see your opponent play moves like that, you just know they're up to something frisky. Go rook here. And then just, just add just a little bit of pressure there. Bishop back to b3. Rookie one looks like the uh, prescription here. Yeah, bishop b3 is nice. It's it's a nice bishop, but it's, it's not doing enough, I would say, on that diagonal. Okay. I think it's time for this. It's almost a queen takes f5 idea. My queen looks uncomfortable. Well, I mean, it, it can't move, but at the same time, it's tying down like five of black's pieces. So I think it's kind of doing well. You can see, you can see what's happening here. My one queen is tying down pretty much everything in the position for my opponent, which is overall a good thing. I'm looking at uh, the queen takes f5, uh, some fun moves there. I don't think they work, but they look exciting. I think we gotta take. I really could go here though. Am I that kind of person? Like, am I this type of individual? I think this says a lot about me. Grabbing a pawn in a position like this. Ugh. This reflects on me, probably poorly. Bishop there, I think it's time for a check. takes. Okay, let's take with a rook. I, again, I could take here, but his knight's gonna reach that square. I don't know if I'm thrilled about that. Let's take like this. 
Because I think what's about to happen is, you know, d5, bishop's gonna get there, pawn's gonna take. We got some uh, ideas. A few tricks up our sleeve. Do we start with a check or do we take? Let's go here first. Let's let him take. Let's let him take and let's push and push. I want my pawn on h5. So my bishops can start to say hello. I need this guy gone. It's a very annoying piece. Mm. Mm. I need to mate him on f7 here. It's the only way. I'm not gonna have any chance to do it unless it's checkmate on f7. Check. Careful. It's not supposed to be that careful. Dude. Okay, luckily he didn't play a good move. He played just an average move. Let's go here. And I think I'll take that way. Oh, no, no, no. You can't give me a pawn. Now I'm going to start to think I have winning chances. Now I'm going to start to think I have winning chances. You don't want to give me that hope. Speed only, dude. I have speed only, that's all I've got. You don't want to test the speed only. You don't want to test the account's name speed only. Don't test me like that. I didn't ask to be tested. Like he came at me. Hey, I was ready to just win the game. Uh, nice and chill, collected. He started coming at me playing damn good moves. Yeah, my account's getting reported after that game. That's for damn sure. I am getting reported 100%. Uh, Dmerk37, thanks for the 14 months. Akis is chemical. Thanks for the 15 month reset. I, he must be, like there's no way this is normal. Can you guys imagine? You just have a position like this, totally normal. And with eight and a half seconds here, your opponent just uncorks, you know, just everything on you. <laughs> like there should be no way. But I think it's fair to say that everyone would have the same reaction. Just full molding, absolute tilt even just watching it i know you guys are upset just watching it like there must be some 1600s in chat that are looking at this game and just getting tilted on his behalf i understand 1600s have to band together the union 1600 union it's tough it's tough out there but don't worry guys for those wondering all rating points lost to this account will be refunded at the end of the speed run. But I might be speed running for a while, you know? I mean, <laughs> geez, this uh, speed run might not end. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> Having a great time here. Might uh, speed run for a couple months here. It's a speed run to uh, 3,500. So uh, I think it's always active until I make it. There's no refunding emotional damage. Now here, I totally agree with you, by the way. I totally agree with you. However, here's my counter argument and why I think this is a net positive. Now. 
This person received the most emotional damage, right? Clearly. Now there are some other residual 1600s that through the ripple effect and the chip embedded in their ear when they became a 1600, they also experience a little bit of just, you know, the ripple effect, the emotional damage themselves. A little bit, but not a lot. I agree. However, think about everyone else in chat who's not 1600, who's lower rated and high, okay, well, let's just say lower rated. They enjoyed that. And they are laughing their asses off right now, having a great time. Now you also have to factor in how much better their lives got as a result of watching this. They're having a great time giggling at you 1600s. So I think overall, we're operating on a net positive. Some people had a bad day, some people had a good day. I think more people had a good day overall, a greater good. And that's just, that's just how it is. That's why these are, are just net positive for the chess community. That's why we're growing the game here. Kingfisher, 689. He had a great day. He wanted to tune in, chime in, and let us know. He had a great day. Perfect. Now those 1600s on the other hand, that's going to be tough. But they'll only be here for maybe another you know, 100, 150 kilo points. And then, and then uh, I don't think they'll be around anymore. Well, we hit 1600, guys. I'll take it. 1600. Latin and Blonde, thank you for the five gifted subs. Low Red Drum. Subs for the greater good. I appreciate it. Five gifted subs, I believe that represents the Latin blonde agrees. For the greater good. For the greater good. Well guys, I'm gonna continue streaming. However, I'm done speed running for today. After doing this guy that dirty, I need to stop. Because right now, I don't know if you've ever played a Need for Speed, but uh, I have high heat right now. There's probably a chess.com mod in this chat right now who won't identify himself. And there's probably a chess.com mod who's currently investigating my games. So we have high heat. We need to uh, let the heat die down before we get back in. All right, so it's important that we uh, take a small break and revisit the speed run another day. We'll, we'll take 1600. We started at 1400 today. We'll take the 200 points. We gotta cool down a bit. You know, we gotta... <laughs> we gotta wait until the cops aren't looking for us. All right? So GG's. That's the King's Indian speed run. We're gonna keep doing this. Not, not uh, going anywhere, but we're done with the speed run for now. So I'm gonna take a, uh, oh, a couple minutes uh, break here, and I'll be right back. But it's Monday. I feel like we did our learning. I'm also 2800, so I'm not gonna be playing any Blitz today. We gotta keep that rating, because I'm obviously gonna lose it tomorrow, playing Title Tuesday. <laughs> but I'm gonna switch accounts here, and uh, in the meantime, try to hit us with another song here. What's it gonna be? What's the next song gonna be? How about... Here we go. I'll be right back, guys. I will, Amadan, I will. But then I have to not play Title Tuesday <laughs> if I want to go for a peak rating. All right, back in a sec, guys. Enjoy the music, thanks for watching. Stay where you are. Gonna continue the stream, just uh, ending the speedrun portion for now. BRB.
can't stop, stop playing. This song, it makes me high.